a few things to get the jades rolling early and some removal, which is about all you can ask for, really. Yeah, I think this is fine. The only thing he's missing here is ramp, but Wrath on turn two isn't bad. He can maybe go Roots and Hero Power turn three into Jade Spirit, so not looking like too bad of a curve here. Yeah, it looked like at first Gemini had a really slow hand, but between the War Axe, these Dread Corsairs are actually coming out extremely quick, which is not... This is not usually what you're used to seeing from a pirate warrior. You're used to seeing a small-time buccaneer or something, but... No, this is a very unconventional opening, but yeah. it looks like it's going to work out for her. Having three weapons in hand can often be really clunky, but having two 3-3 three, three taunts come down next turn is going to be very difficult for the druid to deal with. Yeah, I wonder if Grim... He doesn't have anything to do on turn three. Uh, Wrath and Living Roots together might be helpful, but maybe you just make the the one ones to try and help trade yeah i kind of like making the one ones here because yeah. you know from the face hit that it is pirate warrior oh yeah so may as well get him out there use your mana yeah so the two dread corsairs coming out seems pretty good and with so many weapons in hand i you could try to hold on to it to potentially upgrade it yeah, I mean, Jem really wants to play uh, the Bloodsail Cultist next turn, so maybe she will just hold that uh, to ensure that she gets the buff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, protecting your pirates is okay, but I don't know. Killing a 1 1 with your weapons is just not very worthwhile. You're playing around 1 damage, which, if the Druid hero powers, you're pretty happy anyway. Grim might do that. Just save the one ones and wrath, and then maybe your swipes better off. Yeah, I think you just wrath for three on one of the corsairs here. Yeah, and then if swipe is, if swipe is good, then you'll do it. If not, then Jade Spirit makes it two two. Yeah, it lines up for a pretty good uh, swipe, assuming that the one ones are not answered by the weapon. Uh, if Gem does go for the cultist next turn, you can swipe and trade both the one ones in to clear yep. the board. Yeah. And that'll, if that is the case, that'll be pretty good for Grim because Gemini's probably got plenty more minions to draw, but it's all weapons for now. Mm hmm. Yeah. Grim agrees. So we see an upgrade picked up. I don't think that'll change the play too much. No. Three I drops still seems the best. It's going to get reserved for the Arcanite Reaper. I would imagine so. Yeah, no real reason to trade. Yeah, you... Yeah, really just low value to kill these 1-1s. One just hitting the face is probably best. Well, there's wild growth. Hmm. A little bit late, but maybe on 5? You get to Ancient of War after clearing the board. Yeah, I think he still just wants to swipe here and, yeah. and like you said, curve into Ancient of War in the next turn. Yeah, that'd be great if he's able to. Oh my god. Wow, this hand. <laughs> this can, this this is the sort of deal that can actually lead to a druid win. There's just nothing but weapons, and you get one swing a turn. Yeah, I think she just has to attack face and armor up. Hero power pass. Feels really bad, but... Yeah. And I mean, an upgraded Arcanite Reaper could represent what... She would probably swing on turn five, which would be five. Yes. Plus twelve. Okay, she's gonna play the upgrade now. Yeah, this this upgrade seems it seems weird because an Arcanite Reaper on five. Maybe she's just gonna swing with the X and just straight up equip the Arcanite Reaper. Oh, Innervate pickup, and now Grim can just go for the Innervate War. Which... Yeah, I don't see why not. And then just, yeah, you can Wild Growth and Jade Spear, or just. Hero power, there's really no reason to rush the wild growth. Maybe you want yeah. to draw with it. I mean, I haven't played much Jade Druid, but from what I've found in these aggressive matchups, you really just are looking to find your Ancient of Wars and your Jade yep. Behemoths. And like, it, it's really difficult to win unless you get those taunts. Yep. But they can be game changing if you do. Gemini's going to get through it okay, though. Could just take one swing and then do the reaper you might be a little afraid of ooze but druids don't usually run it and even if they do you gotta you gotta be playing these as fast as you can 
yeah, I think just attack and equip the other one. You're you're taking a lot of damage from the Ancient of War, but you don't really care about that. No. In fact, taking damage could be a good thing down the line with Mortal Strike and stuff. That's very true. Job done. So yeah, but Grim might be running two Ancient of Wars, might be getting Frail Rages or things like that. The brand's nice, but you... Hmm. Hmm. So he, he could brand Jade Spirit next turn, but I'm not sure if he can afford to. I... I, I think I would like to see him drop one of the minions this yeah. turn. I don't think it, it's probably not worth enough to try and just save it to summon a 3-3. A three, three. No. You gotta get a little bit more out there more quickly. And yeah, that'll pay off. If no minions were played, then this Blood Sail Raider would just be completely unanswerable. Which Grim really can't afford to tank that with his face. No, he's gonna have to trade that in. Double trade. Double trade. Unless he picks up a, a Feral Rage or something, maybe. Well, Azure Drake could be good. Seems yeah, you just gotta lay it. Can't be saving these things for Bran. Bran's gotta wait. Well, and... that Jade Blossom gets ramps him to 10 mana the next turn, which is actually not bad with Wild Growth. That's true, yeah. It could be worse. And then cycling with wild growth might get them one step closer to... Well, if there's not Feral Rage, there's also Jade Behemoth. Yeah, he, he probably has two Jade Behemoths in his deck, and then maybe another war, maybe not. And and I would, I would bet at least one Feral Rage. So Grim yeah. definitely has several outs. Uh, that he can draw that can really just shut down the game. Yeah, two war is far from standard, but a lot of lists do have them. Gemma is just gonna squeeze in armor up while she can, might as well. Probably yeah. want to play Arcanite Reaper anyway. Yeah, the war axe would just be wasted. Well, no reason not to play two of these then. Nope. Just play the two, get one armor. And hopefully draw into something next turn. Yeah, Gemini's got a few things she could draw for lethal. There's the other heroic strike. Um, Korkron elites a little bit off. Mm. Is it even worth it to... Um, Grim has 11 damage on board and Gemini's at 15. I wonder if you yeah, let's see. just armor up and Cause... then Finley. If that's going to happen, which I think it would. I think you might, because you, otherwise you die to Swipe and Feral Rage. Yeah, I think this is smart. Because no hero power is going to help you kill them, so what's the point, really? At least not immediately. Right. Yeah, you can't you can't win this turn off of anything, so I think this is correct. And of course, Steady yeah. Shot is probably the best one she could have gotten there. That or yeah, Life Tap. Yeah, and squeezing, squeezing in the Steady Shot wouldn't have even helped set up lethal guaranteed anyway with armor up. If there was just a taunt, then you'd be one off again. Right. Um. Here, I think you just have to Arcanite Reaper the face, but... Yeah. I you... guess this is the same amount of damage? It's the same amount of damage, but you'll be missing out on two next turn. But I guess she could always equip, re-equip the Arcanite Reaper if that was the... Um, if that two damage is necessary. That's true. That is not what Grim was looking for, and now he's going to be forced to Wrath. Cycle the Wrath, draw. try and find Jade Behemoth or Feral Rage. Nope. Oh, and that's not it. He concedes, yeah, he can't get through. Man, it was really close, but yeah, Pirate War is really good in that matchup. Yeah, I mean, really close. He just needed a Taunt or Feral Rage, but uh, didn't get it, and Gem's going to take game one. Yeah, it's funny that Grim led with the Druid. Because it was in such a bad spot. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure about that. You probably would want to save that for last, but I guess not. And, and I like the Pirate Warrior lead because I think it's it's strong against both the Druid and the Priest, assuming that it's Dragon Priest. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Yeah, so... 
with what Grim goes with now, maybe maybe his priest is built better for the for the mirror in some way, but no, he goes to his warrior now. Wait. Which looks like Dragon Warrior. Did they start playing the second game? Yeah. Wow, okay. I'm gonna have to restart my client again. Okay. Oh no. It, I just had the, the druid bug. Ben Broad, please. <sighs> So it's a dragon priest, dragon <sighs> warrior mirror. What do you think about dragon warrior? Uh, I am really not a fan of the deck personally. I've I've tried it out, and I, j I just find it to be too weak overall. Just it just seems a lot more inconsistent than it used to be. So I I just say that personally, I'm not a fan of the deck, and I, I think it's slightly unfavored against dragon priest. I could be wrong about that though. Yeah, I'm not too wild about it either. At first, it seemed like it would have the best of both worlds, but just not quite the case. Yeah, I mean, you can get, like, a uh, Buck into War Axe, into, like, Guardian, really good curve like that, but other than that, you're just having, like, cards that don't really synergize with each other. Like, you have to draw your Pirates, and then you also have to draw your Dragons. Yeah. It just... Yeah. Yeah, Grim has um, got a really good... Um, he actually managed to hit the Blood Sail Cult of stuff, which with the hybrid version, it's actually a lot less likely to do that than normal. You're running fewer pirates. Like, I think, I'm pretty sure these lists always run the bare minimum. They just run Buccaneer, First Mate, and Patches, and the Cultists, I think. Yeah, I think so. I've, like, out of the Dragon Warrior variants, I've never really liked Blood Sail Cultist, but it does work yeah. out for him here. Oh, okay, you're back in now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, another spy historian. It's not the best buff, but it's better than doing nothing. And now the two of these killed the cultists, so that's good. Yeah, it was too bad that the, the Grim used the coin. I think it was a good play, but nothing slowed down a little bit with just Fairy Dragon, it looks like. Yeah, now he can't go uh, co coin four drop into four drop. Yeah. So this is a little bit awkward. I think he might opt to just kill the 3-4 and play yeah, the Fairy Dragon. Yeah, to protect the Fairy Dragon. Yeah, because fa Fairy Dragon uh, is pretty difficult to remove for the Priest. You right. can't Shadow Word paint it. Yeah, not until Blackwing Corrupted turn. Right. He could... Uh, Defender of Argus would be really good if Gemini drew that. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them do run it. Yeah, I, I really like it, at least as a one-of in Dragon Priest. Yeah, at least as a one of it's pretty it's pretty good. Um just because Nether Spite Historian's pretty useless as a body, but it gets ignored because of that a lot. And it can turn it into something else. Right, so look like Grim just went face there. He did. Hmm. <clears throat> Not too sure about it. I guess he he realized he thought that this trade was going to happen anyway, which makes sense. So he wasn't really concerned about protecting the fairy dragon, I guess, because Gemini was going to take out the healthier target. Yeah. Now, uh, Gemini opts to go with the Twilight Guardian, which is fine. But I think she also could have gone with Drake this turn and then had Twilight Guardian plus Power Word Shield next turn. Yeah, I think that was worth thinking about for sure. Because the, yeah, a powered shield is a pretty big deal on a taunt for a deck that doesn't, at least most of these shouldn't run execute. That's a lot more than right. it and Yeah, I mean, it's a 3-8. Would have been what, a Yeti, I think? Uh, yes, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So 19 is a pretty reasonable amount of health. Now with the second Northshire Cleric, there's definitely more reason to be drawing. I think so. Now, does Gemini know that Grim is Dragon Warrior yet? Or has she only seen pirate cards? Well, she saw the fairy dragon. Right, that's true. I think that is. I think that sees fringe play in Pirate Warrior. Or at it's least possible. it used to. But Whoa, I, I don't think she's... That, wow. This usually gets cut from the hybrid list. Yeah, I was about to say that she doesn't have to worry about a lot of burn, but I, I guess not. It's an interesting list. Yeah, that is... Hmm. I mean, it could... 
It could pay off. It could help get through the the Twilight Guardian, which the second one's probably gonna come down. Yeah, double yeah. Nova. Gemini's priest list is pretty well prepared for warrior. I as think as far so. as they go. Um could go with Twilight Guardian. She could also just Nova if she wanted to, to get a draw. Um because if she just goes to the, for the Guardian, then she doesn't really have a great way to kill the Buccaneers. She just has to trade like one of her North Shires in. Yeah, if you heal the if you heal the Nether Spite, then at least only one thing's dying to the small time. You definitely. Oh, that's true. I I forgot that that was buffed. <laughs> right, right. It's got um, it has more than three health. So it looks like she will just go for the the Guardian play. Or she yeah. could even drop Twilight Drake. I mean, I don't yeah, really think I mean, she needs it's a huge, taunt here. But yeah, just taunts okay. too good. Could have if if the Guardian was saved, then again, it's it's similar to the other turn where it could have been saved with the Power Word Shield. It could have been saved with the the second Cabal Talon Priest. So yeah, maybe that yeah, was, maybe that was worth thinking about. But I, I think know, so. Gemini's taken a bunch of turns to heal minions rather than her face, so I think she just wants to be defensive immediately, if possible. But That's right. I mean, the Guardian still puts you in a very strong position. Yeah, I think it's fine either way. With both Holy Novas, I don't... I don't think she has to worry about dying. And with all this removal between the Bookworm and the Death, I just... She's in a really, really comfortable spot. Definitely. I think Grim probably just has to heroic strike to clear this taunt. Yep. Um, and he has the board lead for now, but we'll probably see Bookworm Whoa. come down. Deathwing. Wow. Is that a? <laughs> I think that's a pretty good a pretty good inclusion against Druid. I'm not sure if it's necessary, but if there ever was hmm. a huge Jade board that the Druid it... thought the priest had no answer to, then. Yeah, I agree that it is good against Druid. I'm not sure how good it is against the other two decks, but... I think that, yeah, that's gotta be why it's there. Yeah. That's not a card that you put in your deck too lightly. It's <laughs> pretty huge. No. <laughs> so there's no way for Grim to protect the Azure Drake, so I guess just play the Fairy Dragon, yeah. Yeah, and I mean... Grim is just really far behind on the board and in cards now. Bookworm just destroys in Dragon Mirrors just because it kills Guardians, kills other Bookworms. Yeah, I think Gemini might actually be at risk of milling herself uh, because Holy Nova looks pretty tempting. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's uh, three, four, eight cards. No, it'll be fine. She'll go up to nine. Uh, wait. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Uh, does Cabal Talon Priest help much? I mean, I guess so. You have three mana. Yeah. You may as well play it. <laughs> 21's a lot of health. You have another Holy Nova. I just, uh, Gemini's just completely unconcerned. Yeah, that's... Now, and Grim knows that it's time to wrap it up. Yeah, definitely game over. Yeah. Alright, so Gemini's up to... Oh, and it's also worth noting that the current series between Danger Zone and... Gemini's team Parallax is eight to one for Parallax. So if Gemini wins this and she's really close, then that seals it for them. Right. Yeah. Uh, her winning would clinch the series, and she just has to win with Druid now. Yep. And that was going to be the name of the game. So Grim can queue up the Dragon Pirate Warrior, which. No matter what about the deck, it, it should be good versus Druid, just no matter. Probably about the same as Pirate Warrior. It, it's hitting Druid where it hurts the same ways as it always is. Grim queues up the mirror for some reason. Yeah, I... This is his worst chance, I would imagine. I think so. I mean, this is an even matchup compared to the other ones which are favored. Right. The Dragon Warrior's favored... Don't know what priest he has. I doubt he brought something fancy like a Reno priest, but maybe he did. Hmm. Maybe it's a control warrior, and he doesn't want to queue that up. Not sure. Uh, no, he just played the dragon. Oh right, right. Um, yeah. Then I'm not. I, really I don't know sure what kind why. of priest he has. 
uh, yeah, this will be interesting. I guess I guess this mirror is really gonna come down to who who gets their jades bigger and who ramps better. Which Jade Blossom with two of them in Gemini's hand, she's gonna get the best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think Druid mirrors have generally been decided on who gets their innervates and who gets their wild growths. And I, in this matchup, just one pretty decent board full of jades can just seal the game because right because Druid, Druid can't do anything about mechanics. it outside of Azure Drake's swipe. And that's a really long, long way away. Discovers Mulch, which will come in handy down the road. And then, yeah, just Jade Idol. Hmm. So, I don't know. This is, it, it's something that was really common on Ladder in the beginning of the expansion. And now it's very rare. So, I don't know if pe many people run into this mirror matchup often. No, I... As is. <laughs> I, outside of the first couple of days of the expansion, I don't think I've ever run into it. And admittedly, I haven't played much Jade Druid, but no. yeah, it's pretty rare. I never really got on that hype train because you you always knew that it was going to be weak against the aggressive decks, and patches turned out to be everything that a lot of people thought he was going to be. I kind of shut down the Druids pretty quick. Yeah. Um, here, Grimm's got a couple different plays. He could uh, innervate out a Jade Behemoth, or he could just clear with Wrath and Hero Power. The problem is this doesn't get him ahead on the board, and it leaves Gemini uh, able to develop. Right. It's one of those things where the longer you sit, kind of the the worse it gets. So yeah, innervate that, and then Ooh. next turn, I guess there was Jade Blossom and Hero Power, maybe? Or possibly Feral Rage against something. Yeah, but uh, we're probably going to see a Jade Behemoth come down from Gemini's side, and it comes along with a 4-4, which is a lot yeah. more developed than Grimm's Jades are right now. And this is just already a lot of pressure to deal with. Yeah, Gemini, Gemini is double ramped with Jade Blossoms, and she's way, way ahead in the race here and Grim can ramp himself but what's his Jade Blossom get him currently? Just a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah I mean I guess <sighs> the, he has no clean way to deal with the 3-6 either. He could he could mulch it I guess but you know there's gonna be a lot bigger things to mulch down the line. Yeah a lot bigger. <sighs> Maybe he just needs to innervate out Aya here. Yeah if he innervates out Aya well, then it's going to take a hero power to get through the behemoth, which would be unfortunate because then you couldn't play your behemoth along with it. So, just going to kind of try and make it awkward here. I guess if the behemoth tries to get through here, then your feral rage can kill it, and then you can jade blossom her. Yeah, this this sort of makes sense. Yeah. Um, and, and you're hoping that Gemini has a bit of a weaker turn here. Maybe you can drop Aya and kind of get ahead on the board, but that's not what's going to happen. We're going to see the second Jade be a moth and a 5-5. Five five. Right. And it's just going to use the Feral Reach to get through, and I guess the 4-4 four four is just going to attack face. Uh, yeah, I would think so. I don't think you really get punished by not trading here. Right. Because Grim needs to hero power most likely to get through. Yeah, Gemini just got way, way ahead. Yeah. I think it has to be Aya now. I think so. You Aya and then you can't actually kill anything. But at nope. the same time, if you don't develop this turn, then how are you ever getting the board back? It's a rough situation for sure. Nope, yeah. Aya gets out of 3-3, three, three, which will then get out of 4. Gemini is still ahead. And Grim's not allowed to trade, and he's just going to go... Okay, so he's doing the Blossom so that he can trade into. So this does let him kill off one of the minions. And then I guess he's just playing Aya next turn? Yeah, just Aya... Possibly Mulch if there's something really high priority, which... Well, he, he can't even run like Aya Mulch. No. 
I don't think Gemini has to play anything here. I don't think she does. I think you want to just save that Wrath for Gadgetson. Yeah. The the three three is just not threatening. Mm. You've got your you've got your behemoth in the way. It's really like going face with everything else. Scrim's just so stretched on dealing with this stuff. This is just a nightmare. Yeah, I mean, and now he can't even play Aya because he'll be nope. dead on board. He's forced to Feral Rage, but for armor and yeah, it's just not really. It's just not looking bright at all. <laughs> so yeah, Grim gets swept, and that Druid Mirror is very questionable. Yeah, that was that was a rough match. Um, so so with that win, uh, Parallax is gonna pick up the series win. So good for them. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's too bad for Danger Zone. They were doing. They were in a really really good spot in terms of the standings. Not so much the power rankings, which they kind of had a beef with, but this is this is kind of why the in Mange's Cassidy's and Parker's system they they really look for a pretty good sample size before jumping to conclusions. Yeah, Not to and say I mean, that, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, like this early in the season, it's kind of hard to say still what the best yep. teams are going to be so i can understand that yeah it just happens but the, i don't know there, there's a lot to learn about queuing up different things at different times in in any no other normal conquest format you probably would queue up the druid being down 2-0 like that but in thl it's it's totally different points really matter right i mean uh some two points can decide what team makes the playoffs so maybe grim queues up the warrior she's up the priest there and can get a win even if he eventually loses with the druid it can be really important to his team mm -hmm. right so next up is ridiculous hat and hector howl they're already in the challenge screen which is good news and nice i looked at their series between 1600 dust and temporal legends both in the pink division so this is actually a pretty it's only week three but this is an important one because of that. Okay. So, yeah, Ridiculous Hat has brought Rogue Shaman, Warlock, Warrior. Hector Hell has Mage Shaman, Warlock, Warrior. So, kind of similar. And Ridiculous Hat has banned Shaman, Hector Hell banned Ward. Yeah, so these are, uh, these are lineups that are only one class different than each other and with rogue and mage i feel like that matchup is kind of even and can come down to some tech choices yeah the, it might actually be really tough for ridiculous hats rogue and he banned shaman which i think aggro shaman it's not especially ones with doomhammer although those are kind of minority it's definitely not rogue's favorite matchup but mage and warrior are way worse so i wonder if the ban could have gone better for ridiculous hat but I'm not oh, sure you really think from. you think reno mage is that bad of a matchup for the rogue uh it's pretty bad i i i find shamans not to be such a huge problem with rogue especially a, a more questing variant oriented one if it's aggro shaman i mean they've got no hex you just make big dudes yeah, I don't know. It's it's an interesting one, for sure. Um, but yeah, and Hector Hall, Hector Hall's gone ahead and banned Warrior, so that makes sense. With Mage, you wouldn't really ever be wanting to ban Shaman. It's one of Reno Mage's better. Things. Assuming it's Reno Mage, some people are getting crazy with Tempo Mage lately. But huh. I don't know why. Yeah, I feel like it just. I mean, maybe it's okay for THL, but I feel like it just loses way too hard uh, to aggro shaman on ladder. Yeah, it's actually it's pretty interesting. In some in some instances, if your opponent if they have like a druid and maybe a, a priest, it's just not looking good for Reno Mage, and you might actually have to do something else. Right. Oh, and I don't think we said this, but uh, as to how the uh, series matchup is going. Ridiculous oh, yeah. ha has to win three to zero to win this week. If he wins uh, three to one, they tie. And if he wins three two or loses, then Temporal Legends it, will win. Did another result come in? I thought it was eight to nine. I think so. let me. Uh, right now it's 
eight to nine for sixteen hundred, eight and nine on temporal. Wait, I'm seeing eleven for temporal. Oh, I must have missed something. Maybe another result came, or maybe I just it's, wait. It's not eleven to eight. Well, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. Okay. Temporal legends. Oh, I'm so I'm also very dumb. Temporal legends is blue. I knew that. They're in my division. Okay. Temporal Legends has 11 points. You're right. Okay. Uh, okay. So on to the match. Uh, yes. We see Ridiculous Hat on Agro Shaman and Hector Howell on Reno Lock. And the Agro Shaman is running uh, the Doom Hammer Rockbiter combo, which I really like against Reno Lock in particular, and even against Reno Mage. So I think that this is a, a good deck decision from Hat. Right. The, the other variants that just kind of... They run with the the Jade package and the Aya up at the top. It's it's okay. It can get games done, but nothing really does it quite like Doomhammer. And your opponent isn't really going to expect Doomhammer. And if they see a Jade Clause or a Spirit Clause, they're more than likely to ooze it if it's convenient for them. Yeah, exactly. Doomhammer's kind of fallen out of favor. It definitely has, and I think that's because of how it... It, it's weak in the mirror and also against Pirate Warrior. It really is only good against these uh, more control Reno decks. Yep. I also think it's interesting that Hector Howell is running combo because we do see L the Leroy in his hand, which is kind of weak against Rogue and Shaman, but I guess he's just running that for the mirror matchup. Yeah, I think it's for the mirror. It makes, makes a really big difference. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not even... Not running Jaraxxus. It just has combo and other other tools to try and prevent dead cards. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't think Jaraxxus would make sense. Um, That's what I would guess. So here, Hector can drop Kazakus, and I think that looks like the best play from here. Try yep. Go for the five mana potion, try to get Felbloom, try to get armor. Yeah, I think that'd be the way to go. I mean... The flame tongue's not even near two minions. You don't expect chargers, at least not ones that don't require weapons in South Sea deck hand. So the flame tongue's not that scary. Shadow bolting it doesn't do much because that because Akka seems like the yeah I think so. And he could also go for the one mana and try to coin it out if you're feeling that pressured. But I think he can just go for the five. And yeah, he does an get the fell bloom off of it, which is really nice. Yeah. Uh, two random demons to hand is pretty irrelevant. In fact, it could risk milling himself because you probably want to play this next turn in a lot of cases. I yeah. would actually... Did he get the, the random demons? He did. Oh, well, that, that's... That could hurt him big time. Yeah, I think you just take Mystic Wool, which probably doesn't do anything a lot or, of the time. I, I think there is even a lot of room to take the... to take the plus four health, maybe, because it's probably... I mean, this Kazakus might die but it might also get ignored i, I can see that also yeah i think the demons was probably the least good out of the choices but we'll see yeah so yeah i mean that could be it, it just seems so weird to get the demons because you probably want to play it next turn if you're adding demons in your hand, you're filling up your hand, I believe, and then that could be a milled Reno. Right. Right away. Um, so Hat chooses not to play Doomhammer, to, but to instead develop the board and get an Argent Horse Rider down that can attack for four. And I do kind of like that just because of how much value you're getting out of Flame Tongue and Argent Horse Rider. And the Horse Rider also does not get cleared from the Kazakus potion. Yep. Yeah, I think it would have, um, let's see, if the Doomhammer had been played, there would have been, instead of the 10 damage, and the it, instead of 12 damage, it would have just been 10, I think. And the Doomhammer would overload you so much that you might lose the ability to even Rockbiter it very well. Right, and it, it doesn't even set up for lethal, because you can't go Rockbiter plus Lava Burst, whereas this potentially does set up for lethal if he doesn't have a board clear. So I, I think I like the Horse Rider play more. So Hector actually can. He can play the Kazakus Potion and then use Coin, so he doesn't mill himself next turn. Right, just 
kind of awkward. Or he, wait. Oh, is he just gonna... Oh, Defender, that's, that's interesting. interesting. Okay, so there's a 1-8 Doomsayer to get through. Hmm. I, I kind of like this play, actually. Yeah. So, the Doomsayer's dead on board, but that takes out the Divine Shield. Probably what Hector's thinking. Yeah, um, here, uh, I think you just go for the Doomhammer, because now you can go Rockbite or Lava Burst next turn. I think, I'm I'm not putting the math together too quickly here, but I think okay. that Ridiculous Hat might actually be one mana off lethal. Or Is he? With hmm. the South Sea Deckhand and the Flame Tongue Totem, it seems like there's something that's possible here. Let's see, well he clears the... Hmm. You could get through the Doomsayer more easily, then you'd have... Nine... Oh, Patches too. Patches too. so yeah. Wait, what if he traded the Feral Spirit in to then buff... The one ones? Oh, so the Feral Spirit going into the Kazakus, you mean? Yes, yes. I think... Hmm, well, I didn't then do the math then he's on missing it, but... two damage somehow. But then he's getting it back because the one one slides over. That's... Yeah, that's a, a really complicated turn there. Yeah, there was, there was a lot to think about. <clears throat> as long as the Doomsayer's dead, that's good. Because Reno on this board... Is not. Oh wow! Reno <laughs> Wish we see oh, well, picked yeah. up. <laughs> there he is. It still might not be enough though. No, I don't. I don't think so because he renos and then he's facing down. So he renos. He he trades into the ferals. That's nine damage on board, plus the doom hammer coming down. Yeah, I mean the feral spirit can get killed, but flame sung. Flame Tongue is still there with a bunch of minions. I don't know that Ridiculous Hat's in the mood to trade, though. Maybe you just get this immediate Doomhammer Rockbiter while you can't. I think you do. This is... Yeah, this is a lot of burn here. And th this way, you potentially miss two damage because... Yeah, it's just good to guarantee the... But... Yeah. It's just yeah, good no. to guarantee the six damage that the Rockbiter turns into before an ooze. Exactly, that. right. I, I think it, it's correct to Rockbiter now. And play then, on that. Yeah, and I don't know how Hector Hall could both remove the weapon and deal with the board. It would have to be something like Ooze Shadow Flame. Or, um, yeah, Shadow Flame. Not ooze Shadow, Shadow Flame. Flame. Ooze Hellfire also, but yeah, I think he taking... would just lose if he does that. Right. Well, this board can be cleared with the... Oh, no, sorry, the... Well, yeah, the potion's still there. Never mind. Yeah, um, I mean, Hat does have exactly 11 damage from hand next turn. So Hector Howell will have to heal somehow. Unlicensed no. Apothecary is not what he wants. No, not at all. Um, Mortal Maybe coil? he can... Oh, he can't even play it. No, that's just going to be game. Yeah, really. Yeah, so the Doomhammer, it is important that it suck. He would have been one damage off lethal. That's true. But wow. Yeah, so the Doomhammer really paid off because post Reno. Oh, it wait, just yeah. Didn't really matter. Yeah, I did the math wrong there. He would have so, been one off, but. Very. Not your typical aggro shaman, but it worked out very well. Yeah, Reno Warlock just didn't work out. The the potion was interesting. That yeah. Doomsayer Argus turn was interesting too. I, I could see where it was going. It did soak up a lot of damage, which really helped pay off. But... It definitely did, but you can also say if you had just played the Kazakus potion there and then the left... Flame Tongue would have died. Right, the Flame Tongue dies, I think you only leave a 2-1 on the board, and then you have Reno next turn. Definitely could have been a very different game. But it's hard to say. Yep, so Ridiculous Hat, he's on his way to that sweep that he needs. Mm-hmm. To win the series, that's pretty intense. I would not like to be in that position. It's bad enough to need the win to decide the series, but a sweep... Yeah, that's that's a lot of pressure on Ridiculous Hat, but I mean, he is the captain of his team. I think this is nice that we get a captain matchup here. Right. 
Yeah, so Ridiculous has Warlock and Rogue. Time to queue up the Rogue, which between the Warrior and the Mage has a rough time. Really rough. Definitely. Um, here, I oh, think... Edwin. Rid yeah, Ridiculous needs to keep Edwin here, oh, especially yeah. on the coin. We are not tossing any preps or Edwins away tonight. Yeah, so Edwin, on the coin even, all he needs is um, something along the lines of prep or backstab. There's a prep, okay. Yeah, prep, eviscerate, Edwin, coin. The, the, <laughs> this is the only way to win the matchup, I think. It's yeah, so it, bad. No, it, it really is. You need a big Edwin or uh, some really good questing play in the early game. Yeah, seems like next turn will be the turn because between the weapon that that small time buccaneer is just too threatening. That's right, and buccaneer and war axe is about as good of a curve as you want going first with pirate warrior. Yeah, as good as Edwin is in this matchup, and basically the only way to win. It's a rough yeah, start. Hat's just immediately gonna go for oh, the yeah. play. He, he, knows he knows what it is. <laughs> he knows this is all you can do. Yeah. It's Edwin oh. or Boss. I mean, he has a decent shot here. Sap yep. can remove whatever minion Hector plays, which is probably going to be the Frothing Berserker. Or, actually, I can see the Blood Sail Raider getting played too. It gets buffed to a 5-3, which makes it easier to kill the Edwin. Right. Yeah, the Blood Sail Raider is kind of... On, um... The Blood Sail Raider is kind of tempting. Oh wait, no, he can just clear it with heroic strike. That has to be better, I don't know right? that... Do you, um... Well... Yeah, maybe it... maybe you win if you clear the Edwin, but I don't know. That's 8 damage that could go to the face, which is a, a third of... About a third of the life total at this point. I mean, the thing is, if you clear the Edwin, then what's the rogue doing on 3? I mean, we have right. the benefit of knowing hat's hand but he yeah. doesn't have anything to do on turn three he just has to hear a power pass so knowing the hand i think heroic strike is better but okay. we can't really fault hector for playing frothing here he takes kind of a middle of the line approach he just plops down the frothing and also hits in with the patches one to play around the dagger and two to power up the frothing i guess to where if if ridiculous hat did decide that he wanted to kill the frothing, which would be pretty understandable. Then he might have to do it with Edwin, and then then Edwin's in range of just the weapon and no heroic strike needed. Yeah, and now that he is heroic striking, he's now taken sixteen from it. Yeah. Um, but but still, I I think the pirate warrior is in a fine position just because of how good this matchup is overall. Yeah, definitely. Well, wow, that prep is actually really, really good. I mean, Ridiculous Head is completely with no play for next turn. Yeah, he but... really is going to need to top deck uh, Tomb Pillager or Azure Drake to stay in this yeah. game, most likely. That Arcanite Reaper is huge because between that, that activates not only oh. the, the deck hand, but also with the Heroic Strike too. Oh, yeah. Oh, Reaper God. is huge, but... Ridiculous has been through a lot of spells, but he does find more. So, if Hector doesn't armor up and hat top dex Leroy, that would be lethal? <laughs> it would. <laughs> um, and I'm now, not sure if Hector can actually set up two turn lethal here. here. Yeah, it's either armoring up or just playing ooze for the body. I think ooze... What does ooze for the body do? If you hit for, if you hit them down to ten, then ooze for the body gives you eight on board. That is probably worth it. Hmm. Yeah, I think I like the ooze here too. You're probably not playing around exactly Leroy Coldblood. Probably not. And also. And both preps were used, so it might be really hard. And a lot of spells were used too. There was backstab, fan, and eviscerate. That's Ooh, catches is not what he wants to see there. And no. <sighs> well, I mean, you can patches and cold blood the patches. So that's then true. That, does that um? 
at that point, Nine. you'd be one eviscerate off or oh, yeah. whole blood off of lethal because the dagger's oh, the awesome. the extra one damage that's needed. That's oh yeah, that's completely true. So I think you do just start with patches and cold blooding it, anyways. Because yeah, you... even if you don't draw lethal, it's probably the best play. Yeah, cold blood the patches because the patches can deal with. <gasps> Wait! Oh my god, that that's lethal? lethal. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> he needed either that or the this way. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> that's insane! Wow. Oh my god. So ridiculous hat is. He wins probably one of the more unfavored matchups in the game right now to get on his way to the sweep that he needs. Definitely. Outside of, like, changing <laughs> against control decks, that's one of the worst matchups. <laughs> it's it's really, really bad. I see I see people put out stats that say it's, like, 30-something percent. I've got, like, 20-something percent. It's just awful. Yeah. Wow. So... Wow. Pat is now one win away from winning the series for 1600 dust. He just has to get a win with Warlock. That's amazing. Yeah, and so if he gets the win right now, then they win the series. If he loses, I mean, he's still got them two points. A 10-point week on the losing end is not bad at all. No, well, and if he loses this game, they can still tie. Yeah. Well... Right? If Hector wins, then they're up to 15. Or no, no, okay. Right, 12 to 12. Right. So, uh, assuming that Hat's going to bring a Reno Warlock. Right. He's up against Mage, Warlock, or Warrior. If I were Hector, I'd probably just go with the Pirate Warrior again. Probably. It's actually... That was one of Reno Lock's better matchups early on after the new expansion arena lock did okay against warrior so maybe mage is just better it all depends on how hector how built his mage because reno mage has a pretty wide what is this scene. is seeing this the, a zoo oh my god but seeing the ice lance i think hector how's got the um <coughs> the right the right kind of build but yeah this is zoo. Or, maybe it's Reno's or zoo. or seeing hector's hand he's freeze mage zoo versus freeze mage Throwback? That would be so weird. <laughs> that that would be crazy, but I mean, these are all cards technically that a freeze mage runs. We'll see. Probably not, but we'll see. I doubt it. Uh, I mean, hey, it's it's possible. Ross Nova, Fireball. I mean, these are all cards that a freeze mage runs, but they're also cards that a... <laughs> Wait, Demon Fire? What? <laughs> Alright, well... I, I wonder what made him think that Zoo was a good choice. Acolyte of Pain? Well, okay, still still in Reno Mage, but not as common. Well, I mean, Zoo, Zoo's been so foreign and so off the map for so long. I don't even know. Like, Zoo used to be pretty good against Reno Warlock, but Kazakus is a huge difference. So's, so's an Abyssal Enforcer. So yeah. I don't, I don't know I, what he was doing with, with Zoo. I wouldn't expect it to be good against Reno Mage. I'm not even sure how good it was against Reno Mage before the expansion. It was maybe even. But I mean, Flame Imp into Demon Fire. All right, That's Hector gonna Howell, be a five four. Hector Hall holds on to the Doomsayer probably because he's got Frost Nova, Doomsayer. So he's gonna plan to coin that out, I guess. Well, yeah, and I mean, coining out the Doomsayer and just falling ping doesn't feel great especially right. especially once you see the flame imp you know your opponent is gonna have things to develop on turn two most likely right. you just pray for you just pray for no crazed alchemist or even worse kooky chemist to take out your chemist. yeah you might be packing the kooky chemist it's possible i know brunson's in the chat he loves that card <laughs> i mean you could just play doomsayer here it would take Abusive Sergeant, but I don't know. Seems like a big gamble. I think... But it saves you seven. You would health, just... So. Yeah, I think you do just play the Doomsayer here. Yeah, and then if it doesn't go off, maybe maybe you gotta just Nova to stall for health or fireball out the Flame Imp. If this is actual Freeze Mage, that's funny. 
I mean, maybe if he's actual Freeze Mage, then he, he does want to save the Doomsayer for Doomsayer Frost Nova. Yep. And I think that's Novice fine. Engineer. Just say this I think technically could be Freeze Mage. I so. think Icebog might have changed Hector Hal's mind where so he goes for the slower plan because he can just ice block and taking this damage doesn't matter as much. I mean, there are still there are Reno lists that do have novice engineer too. Uh, Rage's list, it, right? Has all. I mean, this <laughs> no, this this is true. This is like definitely looking like Rage's list. I just really want it to be. We just won't know for a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and here. I'm not sure. I, I guess you can just draw this. This feels really slow, but with Doomsday or Frost Nova in hand, I guess it's not that bad. I'm really not sure about doing Arcane Intellect. I don't know. It seems like something more defensive would be good to lead into the the Frost Nova Doomsday turn. Yeah, I, I think I would Acolyte over Arcane Intellect because it at least soaks up some damage. Okay, Double second Acolyte. Acolyte. This is That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. I mean, that was kind of fun to figure that out. Oh, uh, wow. Also, even despite the... If the Frost Nova Doomsayer does go off, I mean, Ridiculous ha has Malchazar's Imp and Doom, Doom Guard. I'd, I would think that you try and keep the two of them. I think so, too. I think you just Dire Wolf here and push nine damage to the face. Or, Okay. So he's going with that. Huh. Yeah, I think I definitely would have preferred the Dire Wolf there because you push more damage. Yeah. And well, what does um, this do? This is this does set up um, a Doomsayer kill. I mean, to be uh, fair, also a Doomsayer kill. Wait, or a Doom Doom Guard kill. Sorry. That's that's true. That's true. He is playing it to lead into the Doom Guard. And you haven't seen your opponent have removal. Ridiculous um, has no idea that this is Freeze Mage, and he's probably pretty mad with how fortunate it is to have drawn Doomsayer and Frost Nova. Oh yeah, I would, I would be very annoyed. So that's I a, wonder that's if that's a great combo, but <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if either of these players had any idea that their opponent would be bringing Freeze Mage or Zoo. I don't I, think they planned for this at all. I don't think they could have. Ever. <laughs> well, the bad news is that Hector Howell does not run Reno. But he has that ice block and a lot of burn in hand. So That's true. Oh, nice. Ridiculous Hat does get the Silverware Golem, which is pretty important here. Yeah, it might force Hector Howell to use the second Frost Nova. I don't know. I would imagine the Acolyte the, the void walker first yeah i think so and now he can just blizzard yeah blizzard's pretty good you can use the more expensive freeze earlier and you can even kill off the silverware golem and then if another big board gets developed then you just play the play the nova and then maybe depending on what else you can you can fireball ice lance you can do a lot of things yeah, I definitely like Blizzard here. Yeah, get the get the expensive freeze out of the way. This is usually a good way to go. Just goes face with the novice because that's... I guess why not? Because you can yeah. get that trade later probably. That's true. I mean, face damage is relevant when you're playing freeze mage. Oh yeah. Plus, uh, that was the second void walker that got played. So I don't think Hector Hal thinks that. His plans will get ruined too badly, and if there is Argus, then he can just stall it, I guess. Huh. Mm. I mean, you can draw first with Acolyte, but... Probably, you... You're gonna have to play either Frost Nova or Ice Block this turn, it looks like. Yeah. Or. Yeah, there's also the option. What if you were to do something like double trade into the Silverware Golem? Maybe Fireball the, 
the Doom Guard and then just Ice Barrier. Ice Barrier. Then... Yeah, that's that actually makes a lot of sense now that you say that. Then you're effectively at 16 unless you get double soul fired, which that'd be really risky. <laughs> You'd have to tap. Yeah. So he is just going to go for the Frost Nova. Yeah, so so this is the safest play here. There's there's no way that he dies. And now um, he doesn't. I don't know about trading in this novice. It kind of says I don't have flame strike. Yeah. There's not much. I mean, unless unless there was more coil, which I don't know. Ridiculous. He brought this zoo. I wouldn't be surprised if he was packing Mortal Coil because he knew he'd be playing against Pirate Warrior. Yeah, Most that's likely. true. Although I'm not sure. I feel like that would be an unfavored matchup anyways. But Mortal yes. Coil would kind of make sense. Yeah. Yeah, so no Flame Strike. No more Freezes. Three, three of them have been used. Yeah, maybe that was a little bit of a too defensive of a play, like a premature Frost Nova, because yeah, Hector actually, doesn't have a great way to deal with this board now. I mean... It's too bad that... Um, it's too bad that Hector Hal doesn't have a Frost Bolt, because I'm pretty sure the Emperor into, what, Evolved Cobalt, Fireball, Frost Bolt, Ice Lance would have to be lethal, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure it would be. Even... I mean, how much damage does he have now with this Emperor? Um, let's see. Just um, nine with a ping. Or no, there's also Forgotten Torch, so that's eight, four, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so he plays the yeah, Emperor, just... and playing Emperor might save the block from getting popped. Hmm. Does it? Does it even though? I think probably not. I mean, with with the power overwhelming and the dire attack can definitely. Oh, it's all. It's also worth noting at this point that Hector Hall has definitely revealed his hand of playing two ofs. Yes, he played two novas and two acolytes. So ridiculous had this caught on for sure. That's true, and I don't think he wants to tap here, uh, just because you're going to be right. scared of burn, especially after seeing the emperor. Yeah, that's the thing. So he he knows he knows for sure now that it's freeze mage. So he's got to be thinking about tapping, and it's nice to pop as well because you know there's no Reno. Yeah, I think you can just pop with the councilman, and then you can PO the possessed villager and trade, but that would oh, leave you with no taunt not... and weak to the loot hoarder. Is he just not going to care about the the emperor? Not even the loot hoarder yet. You should oh wow. Okay, he doesn't care about Emperor, so... This actually might have been the best play, because there's no ice block in hand for Hector Howell. Oh, yeah, uh, well, so... he has two barriers, though, so I don't think... Hmm. Yeah. So, basically, it seems like he's leaving the Emperor up, basically well, saying that the best way to win is killing next turn. Oh, uh, yeah. the second right, ice lance lethal. gets picked up, so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> was not even looking for lethal at all, but yeah. Yep, top deck. That's gonna be game. Okay, but either way, I think that he could have probably could he have cleared the board if not cleared the board at least somewhat and played ice barrier probably even if there wasn't lethal, but then it would have taken the burnout, but. With Emperor sticking, you're probably not too sad. I mean, I think so. With Emperor sticking and with double Ice Barrier, especially with double Ice Barrier and Arcane Intellect, you can pretty much guarantee you'll survive the next turn, and then yeah. you'll yeah. draw into one of your Frost Bolts or more of your Burn. All right, so, so even so without the top deck, it probably would have been game. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. I'd be more. I'd be interested to learn more about the the leaving the Emperor up. He really. He didn't want to use the PO, which was pretty understandable. Right. Because that would um, be the only way to get through an ice barrier. So now, 1600 Dust can't win, but they can tie if yeah. Ridiculous Hat wins this match. Yeah, so it's going to be Zoo good. against Pirate Warrior. 
Tyne's pretty good. You can get your, your one bonus point. Oh, Instead. you do get a bonus point for Tyne? Uh, yeah. Or... Yeah, oh. both teams get one. No no team gets the three bonus, so both teams get one. No, I did not know that. It's nice. Yep. Yeah, so Zoo actually used to be really, really good against Pirate Warrior before Mean Streets because Pirate Warrior was kind of not really a, a tier one deck or maybe not even a very good tier two deck. If right, and that's basically because Pirate Warrior didn't have access to Play crazy them. early game in... <laughs> <laughs> in in flame imp plus down tusk war but right. this Shift is a Paris, slower no. hand <laughs> yeah no this is a, a pretty slow hand from the pirate warrior actually yep can't complain too much to have fiery war x though no it's uh it's gonna be solid here and yeah the frothing berserker is gonna be a huge pain unless soul fire gets picked up because no minion sticking that's for sure so Hector House has got to be pretty happy where he is. I think so, yeah. I mean, Ridiculous Hat's only going to be able to play down a 3-2 next turn. I mean, he can't have anything that will actually stick on the board. Unless he plays double Voidwalker. Okay. Yeah, that second Makes Voidwalker sense. was a huge pickup because the... I mean, the Librarian would be not the worst. I don't know how attached you are the cards to get a good play but yeah it's definitely not optimal but now ridiculous hat can po the void walker and play one of his two drops and actually get the board back and we don't see any minions in hector Hal's hand again <laughs> no yeah it's weird this is the pirate warrior theme yeah um maybe so po you... and then librarian i mean I don't know, Librarian's always kind of an awkward card. You have cards that you'd like to discard. Yeah, you really don't want to discard that Doom Guard, but I, I do think it's best to just play it now. Yeah. Okay, loses it, but I mean, the Voidwalker's good too. The Voidwalker, as assuming you can keep the board clear, it can soak up pretty big weapons. So. I mean, you can't complain too much about still being at 30 against a Pirate Warrior. Nope. No, definitely not. And then On turn 3. Yeah, and then at any point, if you have an Argus that lands on two minions, that's a huge deal. I would oh, imagine yeah. this is going into the library. Yeah. Definitely, and Imp Gang is, is great here. I think you just go Imp Gang, Flame yep. Imp. Yeah, I mean, the Flame Imp, it hurts to take the damage, but... <laughs> yeah, but you get it out there. I mean, Hector still doesn't have a weapon in hand, so we won't be able to buff that buccaneer up uh this is a more aggressive play for the board but i personally feel like you just want to get imp gang out as soon as possible especially against other aggressive decks it's just so powerful it trades with almost anything and then the one ones it spawns also yeah are the one ones it spawns they'd be good with the the wolf in the hand yeah so not not sure about that but this is still a very strong uh, for Hector to deal with. Yeah, I think maybe maybe Rikus had opted for this play because um, by playing the Wolf and the the Voidwalker, he might just be really concerned about that that small time Buccaneer just doming him. So by playing the Voidwalker, he at least tries to get it killed. That's possible. Nice juggler. That's a card I haven't seen in a long time. That could be a liability. Yeah, I think you played the M King boss first. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, well, I mean, it is... Hmm, it's one more damage that you're taking to face. Well, actually, that's true. That's true. Yeah, and then, then in, in that case, both the direwolf minions would trade. Um, I like this positioning, too. Usually, you want to play Knife Juggler on the far left, but in this case, yeah, the 1-1 one -one tokens are spawning uh, right next to the direwolf, which is nice. Yep. Yep, Hector Hell and knows where the place is. He's just he's yeah. just knocking out half of Ridiculous Hat's life total. I mean, no this is deal. just lethal in two turns for Hector, if no taunts are picked up. And we've already yeah. seen with Void Walkers, so it's really only Argus. And Ridiculous I think Ridiculous Hat's inclined. Oh man, I don't think he can he can't tap. No. 
He has the draw off of Councilman, though. That depends on Hector how playing something. So, yeah, he's playing around Le exactly Leroy if he doesn't. Oh. Do that. And that's not worth it in his book. Yeah. I, I don't hate the tap there. Yeah, I no. think it gave him the best percentage chance to win, but yep, that's going to be it, game. Yep, gave him gave him more chances to to draw. Oh wait, to... knife juggler. Oh yeah, that's true. <gasps> <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's pretty unlikely. Wow. <gasps> oh. Okay, I completely forgot about that. I've Dread seen, these, seen first. these in in highlight books, <sighs> but never on never in THL. Oh my god, I That's can't wait. That's something that Hector could have played around too. That's insane. Can't wait to, can't wait to he see still, that. I think he still can win, though. Yeah. Oh, he's still going to win. <laughs> right, because... No, I think... I think... Uh, Do you think Hat will play around Mortal Strike here? Can he afford to? I think he can, because I think he'll have lethal the following turn, won't he? If, um, oh... No, apparently he's not. not going to. Okay. Would he have though? Okay, let's say he just puts him down to thirteen, and then he has six, nine on the board, and he's at thirteen. Uh, well, the two from Demon Fire is eleven, so, he, so he needs more. to pick up two. Two more, yeah, and he, he... it can't be Juggles either because he has one base on board. Man, it didn't even turn around. That was fun wow. to see though. Yeah, really fun to see. That was uh, that was not something I expected. All right, so now the zoo needs to beat Reno Warlock. Yeah, um, this is again pre-expansion was a matchup that was favored for the zoo, but I I think Kazakus kind of swings things yeah. in the opposite direction. There's no way that Zoo comes back from a uh, Fell Bloom board clear. Yeah, it was favored, but it was still relatively close. Although at that time, with one one night in Karazan, Zoo also did pick up a lot of what it had before that expansion, which is the the discard mechanics, which lets it cycle quite a bit. So maybe it still has the edge over because without drawing Kazakus, Abyssal Enforcer might be too slow. That's true. You might yeah. just be dead. In most cases, if you do it, and the three damage on six might not even be good enough because Zoo, they they kind of buff their things up at that point. This is a very unwieldy hand. <laughs> this, yeah, this is really unfortunate for Hat. Um, he doesn't really have a play next turn, even. No. Um, on the plus side, if he can get some lucky discards, it's a lot of burn. So maybe there's yeah. a chance that he can get a turn five kill. Maybe. It would take a lot. Trust me. Yeah, so Mistress of Mixtures is pretty perfect. Yeah, you gotta play her, and please hope that it's a soul fire that goes away. Yep. <laughs> Only one play here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, my game is actually bugging out, so I'll have to restart. Bugged out. In a minute. So, so unfortunate that that happened. Um... I think you just trade with the mistress. Huh. I guess it doesn't really make much of a difference. The damage gets nullified anyway. So you see Doomguard get discarded from the Dark Shire Library. And are you ever bold enough to just play the turn two dirty rat? <laughs> Knowing that the worst case is gone. Uh, I'm still not back in the game yet. But... Alright. It's a good yeah. Huh? <laughs> Hector Howell is feeling lucky, and he's <laughs> there's no minion that comes out. Oh wow! What was just two soul fires? Yeah, in just hand? just the two soul fires. So <laughs> it's a it's just an extraordinary game. They're both telling each other that. Wow. Yeah, trading into the. And the funny thing is, it's it's actually really interesting that um, Ridiculous has playing a zoo that has. Both Soulfire and PO. It's pretty yeah. unusual. Yeah. No, that is unusual. I think I think I ended up cutting PO's uh, from my zoo lock, and that ended up becoming a standard. Yeah, it's just kind of it's weird because PO's are things that you have to hold on to. 
Yeah, um, Councilman is a card that can be extremely strong against decks, and it doesn't look like Hector has a, a clean way to kill it here. He just has Shadow Bolt, but that won't actually do the job. And this thing can get out of control very quickly. Yeah. Big time. Runic Egg seems great. <laughs> Dies to Hellfire, draws you a card. Uh, but on the could, other hand, you could just take a taunt. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of unnecessary to tap to draw like that. Yeah, the taunt seems good because if one of the if Peddler were to die in a, any other way, uh, Councilman's going down to three health guaranteed. Right. <laughs> Um, yeah, so he takes the taunt. Pretty clear, just tap into Imp Gang. Yep. So what happened? So both the Soul Fires were played? Um, I missed that. Yeah, one Soul Fire got played to get through the Dirty Rat and to discard the other Soul Fire. The other option okay. was the Defender of Argus, so that was pretty good for a Ridiculous Hat. That was about it. So okay. yeah, a Doom Guard and two Soul Fires are gone. Pretty rough. Yeah, but I mean, he does have extra burn with. Maybe it won't end up being too bad. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty great for Hector Hall right now. I mean, you've got Reno in hand. You've got Emperor Thorson. You could even coin Sylvanas to make it really awkward. Coin Emperor just seems so strong. I I would just coin Emperor here. Yeah. I think Emperor is just so strong against aggressive deaths yeah. because you drop it. You know you'll be behind on the board, but then you can just. Insane swing. Yeah. Especially when you have, what, eight, nine cards in hand? Eight, I think. Yeah. You know, he's got to get dealt with. You're, dis you're discounting both Shadow Bolt and Hellfire. And not that it really matters, but the combo's discounted too. I mean, that's not something you look for, but it's. Right. Bonus. That's. Yeah, usually you want to make sure the combo is discarded. Uh, against Sue, it's not that. Important. It's no. still nice to have in case it comes to that and get a quick kill. All right, so this Argus puts it up to a point where you can kill it without trading exactly, but unfortunately this walks directly into fire. Right, Hellfire is going to clear everything except a one. Yeah, just Hellfire into... He, he can well, actually... Can also tap in Tournament Attendee. Yeah, uh, I do just do that and tap first. Oh my um, god, Kazakus even shows up. Between Kazakus and Reno, this has just got to be over, right? Oh yeah, I I really don't see how Hat comes back from this. Yeah, I uh, mean... You might as well play tournament. Attendee, I, right? I guess you do. I'm not really sure what you'd save it for. Maybe yeah. down the line you get a clear board and you play it to protect yourself from... A Doom Guard lethal? Yeah. I don't know. It's possible. I think it just gets played. Yeah, I think so too. Um, power? Second power overwhelming isn't uh, bad. Okay. Well, maybe this does make it a little bit more awkward because you you can Reno from this position, and I think that's fine. But yeah, maybe but... he'll lean toward Kazakus and a one mana potion. I think so. Hector's already seen one Doom Guard and both down, so he might think that he doesn't. Yeah, probably not. Um, whereas Hat actually has eight burn in hand, possibly uh, thirteen if he top decks a Doom Guard. Huh. Sylvanas. Why Shadow Bolt on the Void Walker and not the Knife Juggler? We're gonna be rich. Yeah, I. Really don't understand that. Hmm. We wanted to take out the taunt specifically. And he has combo in hand. Hmm. That's true. It's gonna look funny to Ridiculous Hat, though, from his perspective. Definitely. Uh, two Malkazar Zimps, but yep. nothing to combo the them with. Are it's a nice juggle snipe there um does hat just have to use a po you know, or maybe he just ignores it and goes face and doesn't play around shadow flame yeah i mean the po the po's for burst are just so 
He's so far away from ending it that way. <sighs> right, I mean, Hector's trade. still at 30 here. Yeah, Predicus has just going to continue to flood. But yeah, Hector Hall has combo. Yep. And that's that was all be because he, he cleared the taunt. That's true, yeah. Heads up play from Hector. Huh. An extraordinary play, I should say. This has been an extraordinary series. It seems like Zoo is just not really... Not really provided anything. No. Uh, he, ha he has the combo here. Every single piece got discounted by Emperor. So, And that's the only reason damage. he can kill the taunt. So is this just... BM? I have no idea. Hmm. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, Juggler's here again. Forgot about that. Oh, my. Oh, my God! <laughs> again. <laughs> it's funny because I have the I chat open, it. and they just got to the point uh, 10 minutes ago where this happened in the first. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I freaking I out. didn't have chat open, but that would be cool. No. Okay, so Actually, the, Leroy, the Leroy was four mana. Uh, Kazakus is here, and he can't squeeze in. So he just goes for the ten mana potion. Wait, how much? Why? I can't actually see his health. Well, why do you go for the ten? <laughs> he has nine mana next turn. Wait, what? He went for the ten <laughs> he mana. He must be against, tilted. Against Zoo. Okay. Transform he's got everything health. into sheep. Is that even good against you? He's got twenty-five health. That's oh true. Oh my god. Okay, so the Leroy getting sniped uh... down didn't work the one time. But it, it might win this one. You know, even though that happened in the other game, I still just didn't think of it as an option here. Like, <laughs> it just oh still didn't God. occur to me. Because it's, so, it's unlikely, right? It's a one in four. Yeah, and like, but that's what Hector was thinking about. I just thought it was BM, but yeah, it, that's it was a actually one in, smart. It was a one in four then, and it was a one in four now, and he got both of them, so. Um, I, I mean... Ridiculous Hat's probably thinking that the potion was five mana, and if it, if it's the AOE, then he's done. But well, right. does he know I... that it's not even castable? So no, no board clears from Hector, but he can. Ref... The maximum defensive play he can do is just heal for four with refreshment vendor, and then I guess you just play Doomsayer too to pick up more damage. Yeah, it's either Refreshment Vendor or, I mean, Knife Juggler, there's a full board. Um, you know that he can just trade it off to get more use. Siphon seems like an overreaction. Right, so Maybe Hat needs to, get, to... needs to get a Doom Guard here. Wait, would that even do it? I would like to see Doomsayer. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> if he was at higher life total, he could have even done... Um, Doomsayer faceless, but he's just too low for that. Right. Oh my god, he's got the Malkazar. He he has triple Malkazar Zimps and Darkshire Librarian. Oh my god. He's gonna draw That's... three cards. Oh, he doesn't need to have triple Malkazar Zimps, I guess. I mean, that's a little bit too much. Ah, uh, yeah, and he'd have to trade off one of his minions too, I guess. I guess this is enough. The thing. The funny thing about Hector Howell's potion is it's not even good. No, it's just it still leaves seven power on the board. It's not even good. Yeah. <laughs> I I honestly like I was not even paying attention to what options he had, but No, me neither, because I, like, <laughs> just the fact that it was ten. Yeah. So strange. I, yeah, and Ridiculous Head doesn't trade because he knows that um the minions are basically Shadow Flame. Yeah, I, I like he that. You know he there's can't take no Reno. Long, so. <sighs> so I guess Hector can play his potion. And then lose. So he, he probably wants yeah. to just siphon something, take some trades, and then play Doomsayer. Yeah, siphon probably Silverware Golem? Then he goes up he to go... 10. Oh, he, he can go Siphon, Doomsayer, Sun Fury. That's pretty strong. That's really strong. In which case, you would Siphon... 
the 3-3. Three, three. Oh, interesting. Okay, so there's two taunted Sylvanas in the way. Hmm. And that's pretty good itself. Yeah. But he can I play around that like by that. killing the vendor first. Which is pretty bad. I mean, it, it's good for Hector either way. Yeah, Sylvanas is already a difficult... Two, two of them is even more complicated. It's, it's really hard to say what the exact best play is in the situation. So... What is, what's Direwolf doing here? I mean, Sylvanas is going to steal some things, and by um, doing the Direwolf, I guess he's protecting him, he's ensuring that he'll be able to get through. I wonder... There's still a Doom Guard left in the deck, right? Yeah. That's not it. No. Is he going to try and get that knife juggler? Put this apple on your head. Stolen? So he or could... is he try is he does he think his best option is to juggle down the Sylvanas? I mean, there's a chance at lethal here. It it seems that way. Okay, he's trying to juggle down the Sylvanas. Wait, or... if he plays the flame nymph. He tried to hit the face, but yeah. But now he's at 12. There's P.O. in hand for Hector Howell. Yeah. If he doesn't trade here... Gonna kill the Flame Imp. Okay, so that's 6 okay. damage. There's P.O. plus Shadow Flame. So 2 off lethal. So then... Hmm. Okay, so he doesn't want to leave the 1-1 one -one behind then, so I guess he can't just go all face and then all the shadow. Wow, this this potion really is never getting No, it's it's bad. I, I think Hector was just tilted from the juggle. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty unfortunate that he got two 1-4s. Two um... He taps. I'm not sure. Whoa! See, see we why, don't know what's in tap, his deck. Because then you're dead to Doom Guard, and there's a second Doom Guard, and Ridiculous Hat has two draws to get it. Was he trying to tap for lethal? Yeah. See, here's the thing. We don't know oh. exactly what's in his deck, so no. maybe tapping did make sense there. Maybe there he had a good yeah, chance maybe. to get something, but I just don't I'm know. What, it doesn't seem played, great. Um, he played. He Cold can't Fire. even. So, so he can clear the board. Defender of Argus would have been the thing. Okay, but he's yeah, he could have just not tapped, has two, and yeah, then he has two not to find Doom Guard. And there it is. Oh my God, what a so series! The, so the Leroy <laughs> shutdown really helped. Obviously, it saved his life. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that wow, I think that's one of the best series that I've ever watched. And it just completely was due to RNG. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, that's, hate, that's love true, it or hate but... it, it does provide for some exciting moments. <laughs> Alright, so Ridiculous Hat's going to take that game, but unfortunately, team overall is going to lose, but still yeah, a great they series. Got, they, got their, they got four points, though. They, it, was a, it wound up being 13-12 to 12 win. Yeah, that's, for that's a close one. Okay, so the next series is ready, and they've they've already banned. They both banned Shaman. So it's uh, Sage, who's the captain of Hearthstone Academy, uh, against Swanky Tiger, who's on Netherstorm. This is a, a four seed match to cap it off. Yeah, um, and we've got Sage on Mage Priest and Warrior, and Swanky Tiger on Priest Rogue and Warrior. Yep. So, yeah, double double shaman ban. It, it actually, it it seems strange to me. Um, Sage brought mage, huh. <laughs> and I would think I would think it's Reno. And you would assume, yes. So, yeah, shaman shaman's the best matchup. One of the better reasons to be playing Reno mage, and um, priest is a very bad matchup. So, I don't know. Someone needs to tell Swanky Tiger to accept my friend. Oh no. I'm gonna add him again now, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so we see a tempo mage out of so, Sage. So I guess that explains why. Oh, sorry, I didn't jump in here in time. I um, I was still spectating ridiculous. Okay. Oh, that's so that's he, okay. So he leads with the mage and its tempo, huh? Yeah, it's tempo. Um, Swanky added me, so he is playing what looks to be a pretty standard miracle. Unfortunately, he drew patches. So this buccaneer is only going to come out as a one-two. Right. Yeah, seems about right. It's something that you hope that the rogue doesn't have backstab and that they have to trade. Yeah, but yeah. unfortunately for Sage, she does, and it's pretty clear. Backstab, hit face with a buck. Do you think that you hit face with a dagger here or not? Um, Probably not. There is probably a world where you fan the following turn. I think so. Um, and, I think holding it's yeah. fine. So we see a Cabal Chemist in Sage's deck. Uh, that's not really a card that I've seen on ladder. <laughs> Whoa. This is a deck. <laughs> it is a deck. Yes. Um, so Sage is just going to play the Tempo Flame Waker down. And it dies to the board, but... You really yeah, do you need just, to get some tempo play. back. You've got you've got two flame wakers in hand, and you have no no cheap spells even. Yeah, uh, it does it does clear the way for Cabal Chemist on an empty board. So we'll see what that three three can do. <laughs> so yeah, I would imagine that you just um, just fan. You definitely want to kill it. So yeah, I think so. Um, you don't you need to also... fan. you're not doing anything else. Yeah, I like the fan. I mean, uh, by saving the fan, you have the option to break prep fan at any point. Which right. It's pretty good. I don't know if it's worth holding on to, though. Yeah, I think that's definitely what he was going for there by saving it. Um, so it's, it's, it's an interesting choice. Now he can... He could just fan and play patches and trade. Right. Oh my oh god. My... Oh. Wow. So I mean the prep the prep fan is just gold right now. You've got it with Drake, you've got Flame Waker, and you've got Auctioneer. I think Auctioneer is probably never going to be it, but maybe mm. the coin's just good enough. With with patches, you just need to hit one. Yeah. Yep. I think you can. Honestly, like, Hit two even if we didn't better. get that, prepping fan isn't the worst thing. You should play Pat. Uh, I mean, patches, it, it buffs questings, it buffs Edwins. It's... Oh, wait, there was no one mana. Oh, so oh. two had to hit them. Hmm. Okay. Wait, that so... doesn't... That doesn't make sense. He played Flame Waker and then he played Coin. How did he not have... Why was there zero mana then? What? I feel I like know. that's just... A visual bug? I, I don't know. I'm not um. sure. Either. So... Yeah, so the patches just wasn't played. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Sorcerer's Apprentice, you could ping, you could ping off the Swashburger, but then you could also just play the... Analyze. Yeah, having no clean way or no way at all to deal with Flame Waker is pretty rough. Um, right. Flame Waker is a great card in Mage and an even better one in Rogue, I would say. Mm hmm. Yeah, definitely. They could never, I mean, they don't make many, very many good cards for Rogue, and this would never be it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's all lined yeah. up for the Auctioneer now. You're at 25 health and you've got the board, so. Yeah, huge no auction your turn next turn. I just pass. Yeah, now if next turn is auctioneer prep conceal, that'll be pretty hilarious going into the flame strike, but oh, that's true. We'll see. You get the idea that it's tempo mage at this point. You've seen flame waker. Reno mages don't run this. You just can't really build a deck that's consistent enough to be tempo Reno mage, although I'll admit I've thought of it. Huh. Yeah. Um, it's bad. 
Definitely. So Sage could start with a book here and then go Sorcerer's Apprentice into Fireball because it looks like that's what he's going to do. He pretty much has to remove one of these threats. Right. Maybe I mean, the you, Flame Waker is higher priority. You you can wait on the Flame Strike, but you don't. You also don't want to be forced into it, and you don't want to be taking the damage that's going to happen in the process. Volcanic Potion. That's an awkward card for a Tempo Mage because they like to have a board. Yeah, um, and that doesn't help him kill any of these four health minions, so... I don't know, maybe maybe you don't fireball here, because you're already so far behind, your only chance of winning is getting a just huge counting flame strike. On, just counting on the flame strike, and most rogue things will die. The flame strike, it's just so weird to see a mage like this just kind of... Faceless, so... Basically be a, be a control deck. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, Tempo Mage definitely can play the control role yep. well against, uh, maybe against Aggro Shaman, or, or at least it could pre extension but not really against Rogue here, especially with Swanky no. Tiger's hand. I don't think so. You need Polymorph. Yeah, so Swanky Tiger, I think ho holding on to the Auctioneer's really really smart if that's the case because then you can do auctioneer prep fan conceal the next turn yeah i i agree with that um i think just draking would have been fine because then the worst case scenario would be flame strike and then you can just gadgets in and conceal and there's no way to kill it for the mage but he isn't going to play the gadgets in here probably just going to prep i would imagine the, the, the conceal you get a I second draw could... off the fan, but... Yeah, I think the Conceal does make sense. I mean, we know that the Flame Strike is coming down, so it's kind of useless, but... From right, Swanky's perspective, it makes sense. Yeah, it is It is a lot in on Flame Strike, although you, you probably think that the Tempo Mage only plays one. It's funny how <laughs> Flame Waker reveals himself. Right, it's it's an interesting interaction because it is dealing damage. Yeah, it's funny. Ragnaros does it too. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not all bad. With Flame Strike out of the way, you can play things like Azure Drake and Tomb Pillager and basically load up about yep. as much as you want, really. May as well just Drake again. Um, kind of would have liked to see the Thalnos played there just to cycle even more through your deck, but. Yeah, Swanky's this really is... eyeing that fan of knives with the spell power combination. I think before with before with Drake having not played it on three and still just this whole time looking at that fan. That's true. But I mean, when you're in such a favorable position like this, you don't really think about yep. saving cards to combo them with board cards. No, but, definitely not. Um, but pushing damage with the dagger is also good. You have Leroy and Patches, and I think you haven't drawn any of your abysses or cold bloods yet nope so as soon as you draw them you're really getting close to lethal rag i really don't know about rag in this position yeah it's so so risky against the rogue even if you hit the azure drake i mean sap is just so devastating i think i think fireball greater healing potion would have been great i think so too yeah, yeah um just greater healing back. potion <laughs> you you heal up to 26 yeah that would have been much better actually but sage does get lucky and wins the fifth. so from his perspective it looks like he's in an okay position but i don't know questing sap or tomb pillager sap there's a lot of things swinky can do here to swing the board back in his favor right yeah the reason that the fireball greater healing potion seems so good i think is that you just um you just give yourself more time to abuse the other Flame Waker, which it doesn't look great with the Volcanic Potion, but it actually could be pretty good, even with Thalnos, too. Right, and I mean, you have to assume you're running some other cheap spells, maybe Mage in here. That would be an right. insane draw with Flame Waker. So Rag's just going to get sapped, and that actually mills a card. Frostbolt's a very important card. Sage really wants to have Frostbolt in this position. Right. Uh, but unfortunately for him, he doesn't get it. Yeah. Well, you can do the play from last turn. You can remove the 
pillager and also heal and maybe babbling book gets you something good yeah i think so you may as well do it um book first this creator healing potion is going to get a lot more mileage than i originally expected it to yeah <laughs> or will it okay so it's drake healing potion then hmm so instead of removing the 5-4 and giving your own opponent the coin, you just have a minion of about the same strength on the board with it? Yeah, it's it's a pretty easy one to remove. So questing, you can make a pretty big questing, and saving the patches from all this time could finally pay off in doing that. You could questing Thalnos backstab. There's lots of cheap stuff to go with it, but you can also auction here. That's true. I kind of like the questing play. Yeah, Thalnos backstab. Oh. Let's see. In you fact, can fit a fan in. I think there's even some plays where you just you can trade the pillager in, then just do questing auctioneer coin patches. I don't know if you'd find hmm. prep or if you'd backstab anything of your own. That's you probably true. have two. You'd probably have two big threats at the end of it, both. That's interesting. Oh, okay, he so picks just... up a prep, so he can prep the Stage. fan now. I, I like this, yeah. Well, it's good that he found the prep, because, I mean, poking it with the dagger would be fine, but then you're only drawing one with the auctioneer, and that's just not what you Yeah, want. especially because his, his next draws are just um, the one-mana pirates. He really did need that prep to get things going. Otherwise, right. he would have been in a position where he uh, can struggle to develop on the board. So I think I think this is... Um, you can clear the board with Cult Sorcerer and Volcanic Potion, but maybe Flame Waker Volcanic Potion was even better. That's true. Just... I mean, this is a board clear, but you could have pinged the one that Flame Waker didn't hit, assuming Flame Waker would hit one. Yeah. Um, here he's just going to book and... Maybe just play the Sorcerer's Apprentice so he can combo spell power with the Arcane Blast next turn. Yeah, the, the Apprentice is really good. Both backstabs got used all. Yeah. And I mean, it, with this hand, the discount isn't going to do that much. So I think you're okay with the Apprentice dying rather than the spell power, which could be more valuable. <laughs> uh, Swanky Tiger can make a really big question. Yeah, with now, this hand. now's the time to make the big. The big questing. It's a shame Edwin's not here. Yeah. But, yeah, so the second conceal was picked up. So having seen all the AoE, some randomly generated, some not, I think uh, just make a really huge concealed board. Hmm, why not conceal patches while you're at it? Yeah, I think so. He's, um, a, he's a nice guy. He gets one damage in and makes the questing bigger. Yeah, I mean, at this point, what are you saving patches for, really? You already have a charger in hand to combo with. Yeah, I mean, you definitely, it, you definitely just don't Edwin. have to cold blood the patches, but... Right, right. But... Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, the questing's just a... It's still pretty safe at 5 health, but you actually could have played around a... It'd be pretty crazy for there to be two flame sticks. Another Cabal Chemist, what is with that? That's... Wow. Yeah. This Tempo Mage is like a grinder mage, kind of. I think he should have just gone with the Chemist here and tried to... I, I don't even know what potions you can get. You can get Dragonfire. But... Yeah. I think they fixed that. Oh, yeah. Spellbender is going to come in huge. Well, he can't actually target a minion. So, no, just that Arcane? anything that would target oh. because Sage is pretty desperate to try. Oh, right, he will use the Arcane Blast. Any way to do that? Yeah, the Fireball. And if he either gets him. one, oh, not the juggles you want there. No, but he got pretty good ones before that. <sighs> yeah, so Swanky Tiger doesn't know what secret this is, and you've got to play. You've got to try and play around something. I guess the question is, if you can't kill Sage, are you going to win? Probably not. 
Right. Like, so, so it is lethal because we know it's counterspell. Okay. And he, he plays around it correctly. And he gets the good news. So yeah, good thing it was counterspell. If it was... Well, actually, I'm not sure anything would have protected him, because if it was Spellbender, then... If it was Spellbender, then the Cold Blood got eaten, but then the Eviscerate wouldn't. If it was Ice Barrier... That Ice Barrier been... would have saved him a turn. Yeah. I, th I think it would have... Yeah, it would have had to be either that or Ice Block. Right, right, right. Yeah, you just couldn't play around those things, though. Oh, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> what about... What about the Polymorph Potion? It would have eliminated the Leroy. That's minus six damage. You'd still have Cold Blood. Oh, in the oh no, but he would have just played uh, Patches first. Oh, yeah. Or he could he could. Did have. he do I that, though? I think... I actually don't remember. I was amazed. It's, it's tricky to play around these randomly generated secrets. But yeah, Tempo Mage goes down, and I, I'll be interested to see how it can do moving forward. Maybe yeah, it does okay against Pirate Warrior? I don't know. Just seems like a strange duck. Uh, what what I have heard about it is it's been touted as a deck that performs well against Pirate Warrior. Uh, that's like the main reason to play it. If you are running a deck with like mirror, double mirror image and double arcane missiles, but it looks like Sage has kind of a slower build of Mage, so Very I'm not slow. sure what he's going for there. Uh, Very this looks slow. like a Reno Priest from Sage. But novice so Engineer. It... That usually leads itself more to some kind of combo deck. Yeah, maybe he's running Prophet Velen? Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. Um, Swanky Tiger is playing my least favorite deck, Dragon Warrior. But it should be solid in this matchup, I think. Right. Yeah, so Swanky Tiger's got... Okay, it's the the Dragon Pirate Warrior hybrid again with Nether Spite Historian. I actually I actually huh. have seen that in a list. Um, I think Pizza was playing it on stream. Was he really? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I think oh, he was just pizza. saying, like, you want more threats or something. Okay. Like so... that, I haven't played with it, but... Okay, so then the idea is that a good enough smork deck, so it's like a tempo value thing. <laughs> I don't even know. Kind what of, it. yeah. I mean, it's not it's not really giving you that much tempo, but I, I'm not really sure, honestly. But it, it can't be completely horrible. So Nizos first mate is going to be I guess not. a great pickup here. I kind of would like to see that over champion because you're getting yeah, four additional damage in from the Buccaneers. Uh, yes, it, it is a little bit off curve, but right. I, I almost it's... think that was better. I guess a reason to trade with the... I was trying to think of a reason to trade with the Novice Engineer. I guess Potion of Madness would be one. I don't know. Hmm. Kind of That's weird. possible. Ooh, Twilight Whelp, perfect. Oh yeah, I definitely take the Whelp here. Uh, take it every time. Yeah, it's just gonna improve your chances. I, I think the better the Holy Nova is on turn five, the more likely that Sage is gonna win. So. Right. I mean, this is this has been such an aggressive opening. Right now, Sage just wants to make sure he survives until turn six. I think you were right about that, Nzoth's first mate, though. That's four yeah. extra damage that could have happened. I think so. Um. He can he can play it now though after he nether spites. It's still a lot of damage. Right. Yeah, and just I guess another spite historian first. That's really the nether spite's great because it's gonna give you Dragon Egg Crusher very good card against Reno. Especially a, a, a Reno Priest. They only have what, Shadow Word, Death, and Entomb? If you can get the 9-9 procced, I, I would definitely take that. Yeah, I would think so. Although, Azure Drake is... It's a it's a big pain for priests, so... That's true. Four attack really minions. Go wrong with it. 
Just never Deathwing Dragon Lord, please. Yeah. <laughs> you won't have yeah, dragons in hand to summon. Azure Drake also kind of helps your curve out. Uh, you have the Twilight Guardian into the Drake, but I think Crusher is just so strong overall. Right. Yeah, so just trades, clears the board, keeps the champion healthy. Seems good. Oh, Excavated Evil. That's actually a pretty good pickup for next turn. Yeah. Okay, so this is Reno Priest, and yeah, Sage is gonna have the board under control and be able to Reno whenever he wants, and that Chilma's a big deal too. Oh yeah, definitely. If he's gonna Sage avoid playing the operative, which he probably will, he's probably just gonna go board clear into Reno. Uh, that's that's a very powerful card against any mid rangey type deck. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're Swanky here. Do you just go for Corcoran to clear off the taunt? I'm not too sure. I mean, you've got the two four drops here. I, I almost wonder if there's more merit to Bloodsail Cultus just to guarantee that weapon buff because, yeah, all the all the pirates traded in. Well, the, this, I this guess makes this is sense. Fine, though. Yeah. I think the this turn in, in Swanky Tiger's mind is just good overall and kind of forces maybe a shadow red pain which would avoid a five drop i think sage's I think so. best play would be blackwing corruptor otherwise yeah and here if you're playing the drachnid operator who's your activator for chilma but i think it's yeah. much more important to get the five six on the board especially against a deck that's probably not running executes yeah probably and there's not. always a chance that you get a dragon off of this yeah so Priest is pretty good to have weapons, but not one attack weapons, I would say. Yeah, I think you just take the Corcoran as yep. a 4-mana deal 4 damage to a minion. It's just a solid removal spell, kind of. Yeah, I think so, too. You're not really going to use it to hit the face. Yeah, it just kills... Well, it could kill a Frothing Berserker, potentially... Frothing Berserker yourself is fine too. That's interesting. See, I see the but thing yeah, about Corcoran. Corcoran's Korkron, kind of guaranteed to do something, though. Frothing, I mean, it might just get Corcoran. <laughs> kind of ironic. Right. Like Corcoran can be used both offensively and defensively, whereas Frothing yeah. isn't really great defensively. Like if you don't have board control the turn you play it, it's just a two-four. Mm-hmm. All right, holds back on the fairy dragon. Which, I'm not sure why. Yeah, it doesn't, so, yeah, and I don't know what Swanky Tigers really gathered from this deck so far. There was a knob played by a priest, so. I think you have to, you yeah. have to assume it's Reno. I, you... I would imagine. Um, But you still don't really know what else it is, because novice is just not typically. Right, so I, I'm just thinking, so Swanky Tiger holds back the Fairy Dragon. It would be to play around, like, MC Tech. Or that's AOE. actually that's actually a pretty good but, thing to think about, is MC Tech. Yeah, Dragon Fire Potion would be no problem, though. So right. the, the only other AoE that would really be an issue would be, I guess, I guess exactly Excavated. Mm -hmm. um, I think that Thalnos is an interesting inclusion in arena priest deck i'm not sure if it's standard or not but, but i kind of like it it'll combo well with uh excavated evil or holy next turn i think i think sage between that and the novice engineer there's some kind of combo in here and i profit Velen seems reasonable i would imagine so that's that's more draw than you usually you know priest yeah this deck's interesting <sighs> i mean reno priest is definitely not bad and this is kind of a unique twist on it. I'm not sure if the if any sort of OTK combo is necessary. There's no like warlock that he was going up against, but no. I mean, Reno's just good because Akis is just good. Yeah. Even so imagine a priest mirror. Swinky's just gonna go for the six six. The Reno means that it stays at a six six, but it's still a pretty relevant threat. And with no shadow or death in hand, Sage can't remove it that cleanly hmm. so so 
Yeah, with hmm. Thanos, there there is a way to guarantee just clearing the board, but it would suicide your own Reno and maybe just playing mm. Chill Maw. You won't get the death rattle off, but it might. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's worth like, thinking about. Could have gone for the Thanos Excavated Whoa. Evil, but. Okay. So. <laughs> this is a goofy deck. I do know that Crip has run a. Oh, okay, uh, that's a board clear. That's fine too. Yeah, that that's that's nice. I'm, oh, oh I guess we didn't notice the, that one. Is this an Auction Master Beardo deck? It might be. I know Crip was running a deck with Sir Finley and um, Spawn of Shadows, and it tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it had Auction Master Beardo too. Um, I'm normally not a fan of Crip's deck building, but. Me neither. Maybe this deck. You're telling me out. he's not the best. The best. The, the best Hearthstone player. player? <laughs> <laughs> um, Corcoran on an empty board coming down again. It's against for Priest. attack. Oh my against god. Against Priest. Oh, poor curator. I hope he has uh, corrupted seer in here. Okay, Azure Drake, Cold Light Oracle. Oh, okay. He did have another. Mer oh my god. What is what? this? I, I don't even know. Why didn't he play the Mergleton? I guess he wants his hero power? See, that's the thing. Like, you usually want the priest hero power in this deck. So Yeah, that's true. But, okay. <laughs> that's fair enough. Um, Over on Swanky Tiger's side, this is a pretty bad hand. It's really not what you want to see. Yeah, so I guess it, it's too bad. Like I, I, I want to know so badly what Sage's deck, but I think the Fairy Dragons are just going to get played in the Excavate Evil, and the Swanky Tiger is going to concede. Yeah, I don't see it happening any other way, really. Oh, it's sad. I, yeah. Okay, so this it with. That's just so much restraint to not flood the board. Like, how can you? Like, yeah. Like, how how do you win from here? How can you not win just trying to get in there? Like, armor up's not gonna see. <laughs> He's got brand cold. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh my god. So so brand cold light is probably the worst thing that Sage could do here because he could, um, it would actually give Swanky Tiger threats in his hand. He could brand Azure Drake and then troll himself with two Finley decisions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excavate Evil seems fine. This is fine. Uh, what else is happening? I'm surprised Frothing wasn't played alongside. Yeah. Okay. Um, Just upgrade. The now. So, so this is another Dragon Warrior that's running yeah. more pieces of the Pirate Package. The Blood Sail Cultist. Even the Upgrade. The upgrade. Yeah. Re really weird. I just like... I, I feel like these decks are trying to do way... Yes. Well, actually, no. I think I've seen Swanky Tiger's exact list now, but I saw it on the Vicious Syndicate report, and this oh, was, really? um, yeah, I think this was, like, Hoy's list or something. It's a dragon, it's a dragon pirate hybrid that leans much more toward the pirate. Um, the dragons are much more bare bones. It's got, it's got double upgrade. But, but and was also... it running Nether Spite Historian? That's the question. Uh, no. Yeah, <laughs> see, Absolutely that's the not. that's the thing. Nether Spite Historian and these other pirate things, I just don't think it works out I very well. I completely forgot about the Nether Spite. Yeah. <laughs> um. So Brand Drake is fine. It gets a lot of power on. The you have even more card advantage if you needed any more. And yeah, this that's gonna be it pretty much. Yeah, I would think so. But I hope it keeps going. Yeah, let's, let's see some more cards in this. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the there's not enough mana even to get through the the Chilma. And you wouldn't even be really happy if you did get through the Chilma. No. What so I guess you just um probably play that Fairy Dragon now. It's any damage to get through is helpful. Yeah, me as well. Because if you can, if you can get through while keeping the Azure Drake alive, that's extra help that you can have. But 
No, just armor up. And then at this point, frothing comes down, and at some point, there's an excavated evil lethal with that too. Oh, that's true. Yeah. At some point, not now. Um, I wonder if he can even set up for it. Let's see. Because that's eight going to the face. I don't see much harm in just flooding the board a little bit more. But I mean, maybe yeah. you're saving news for Arcanite Reaper. Not that you would lose to. Yeah, I think I think these lists would typically be plain one. So yeah, now you can kill the Chilma, but then if the Death Rattle goes off, you've what? You've hit the Chilma two times, putting the Frothing up to six, and then the the Death Rattle would bring it up to eight. And you're asking the priest just to have a little bit more five damage. Yeah. Okay. So that's 17 health. Sage has 12 damage on board. And Excavate Evil gives you 5. So Excavate Evil is just lethal, right? Uh. Yep. That's 5 damage. Essentially. Wait. Yeah, so that's that's exactly lethal, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you could also Finley and get And then, you know, yeah, damage you need a little bit more to. damage, you can Finley, and then, unfortunately, you're one man off using the hero power for free with Raza. Oh. <laughs> Gotta get that Raza value. I mean, All right. this is lethal, but I'm actually pretty happy if Sage misses it, because there's way more of this deck to see. That's true, yeah. So he doesn't see He's it, but... Death. It doesn't really matter that much because this is. Still... Um. He could still. Actually, he he still could have gotten it there. That excavate evil would have done it too because the brand hitting into the, the fairy dragon oh. was still it was still too damage on the frothing. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But uh. <laughs> okay, that's good. More cards. And he's gonna. Death I'll again. take it. He's gonna death because why risk? Why whisk your board getting wiped in any way? Because if the Chilma died, I mean, who knows? Pretty doubtful, but... Wow. Okay. okay. That was quite the priest. Uh, Sage brought really interesting text. Yeah. Um. So Sage evens this, and now he has Mage and Warrior. Yeah, he Tempo has Mage and Warrior, and I wonder what kind of Warrior, because if you're bringing Tempo Mage and Reno Priest, it seems like your Warrior... I don't know. Not that there's anything wrong with pirate or we or dragon warrior, which we've seen all night, but they're just not the most unique decks. And Sage really seems to be about the unique decks. Yeah. So if he did have uh, a control warrior, that's going to be really good against. Well, actually, it's really good against pirate warrior. I think it's maybe only slightly favored against dragon warrior. But then it's it's pretty unfavored against Dragon Priest. If Swanky Tiger is running that. Oh, Tempo Mages, you mean? Oh no no no, Control Warrior. Oh, Control Warrior, yeah. Um, it should be good against Pirate Warrior. Oh, and there it is. Well, should be good. Okay, yeah. So Sage is rocking Control Warrior. And yeah, uh, so Control Warrior, it should be pretty good against. Pirate Warrior, the dragons, though, especially with Nether Spite, if Swanky can get wind of it being controlled early. Oh, that'll be yeah. The, that'll be the key. Yeah, Nether, Nether Spite can definitely, could definitely change some things and get some really high value dragons yeah. out of that. Yeah, Swanky's just got to figure it out early. Because right. if he plays it on turn two and just chucks up Sage to having. Maybe a bad start, which is incredibly unlikely, but... Wow, yeah. Sage keeps Justicar in the opening hand. He also keeps Dirty Rat. I don't play much Control Warrior, but do you think that's right? Keeping Dirty um, Rat? I played a little Control Warrior, and I think... Against even Pirate Warrior, and especially Dragon Warrior, Dirty Rat's something you should avoid to, to play early. Okay, that's that's what I would think, is especially yeah, because you know you could pull like a Draconid Crusher or something. Yeah, and I mean it, that would just be game losing. 
It's it's not even the Draconoid Crusher sometimes. If you just pull a Frothing Berserker, that can be enough to ruin your day because then they have their... Presumably they got some minions on board from earlier. Yep, this is going to be okay. case in point right here. So they've got minions on board and they just make the Frothing huge. Oh, and that upgrade is a huge draw. Yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't use it right now, although... Oh, yeah, I, I think you have to go for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, because this is the way... Yeah, this is the only way to get through without involving frothing and you want to trade and have frothing just go go face right uh frothing goes face you keep it completely healthy it's not weak yeah. to execute yeah and uh, even even champion lives and this this oh yeah puts, this puts the warrior in a spot where they'd kind of be happy to play ravaging ghoul maybe if execute was still one mana they could <laughs> yeah it, if if only that would be a huge swing turn but yeah it isn't so sage is in a really awkward position now yeah in fact i want I... I think it probably would have been worthwhile. I mean, this is kind of hindsight here with how low he's getting and the huge board that Swanky Tiger has, but even an unactivated revenge is pretty good against Pirate Dragon Warrior. I would probably consider keeping it in the mulligan. Yeah. Um, luckily uh, for Sage, he does pick up the slam, which will allow him to deal with the frothing. And if he d can't deal with the frothing, then it probably would have just been game over. Yeah. But... He's still alive for now. He has Ravaging Ghoul for next turn to clear oh off my God. the 1-1. One, one. But Corcoran is a huge draw. Yeah, and let's see. That's that's, um, that's 12 damage being connected, so you don't even care about Revenge, although you would be one off the lead. Um, that's because true. Revenge armor, but I, you just don't care. You do this damage. You like, even if he has the Revenge, then he has to have a Taunt to Or he just right. dies to the second Reaper charge. And yeah, this is just going to be game. Yeah. Yeah, so Revenge could have helped, but it probably would have just delayed the inevitable because at some point, they're going to draw another Charger. They're going to draw um, South Sea Deckhand, Corcoran Elite. Actually, I, I would be kind of surprised if this deck is running Deckhand, but but I oh, agree. Oh, yeah, There's that's right. It's, um, it's, it's probably not. Although I think the upgrade changes things. Maybe it does. I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, so that, that Dirty Rat pull definitely changed the game a lot. That was just, what, it connected for 7, I think? Or 6? Yeah. Right. Okay, so Control Warrior goes down. Um, all Swanky Tiger has left is Priest, which, if that's Dragon Priest, that's very bad for Control Warrior now. It's very yeah. bad for... Well, no, Tempo Mage might be reasonable. T Tempo Mage might be okay. I feel like the Priest would still be... But against Warrior, Warrior just can't deal with uh, like Brienne shenanigans or all the high health minions. But but Sage will queue up with the Tempo Yeah, it's probably smart. a stronger matchup here. He can keep... Uh, Mana Worm on turn one is still good. Yep, Arcane Blast... Sage is a big fan of the alternate hero portraits here. Oh, yeah? Got um, the and, uh, and the Magni. And also, I don't think we said this at the start of the game, but the last I checked, uh, Netherstorm was up 4-1, to one, so this game doesn't have yes. huge implications right now, but yeah. it, w it would Swanky, definitely be significant. If Swanky wins, it's good. Yeah, if, if Swanky wins, then Netherstorm is pretty far ahead. Yeah, they'll, they'll basically be in the position that... Uh, Parallax was over Danger Zone before the first series. Yep, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, not playing anything. I think I would have liked to see just a Tempo Northshire thrown down there, maybe. Right, like, it. it's pretty good. If you force your opponent to Frostbolt, you're 1-3 or, or you're 2-3, then they're not playing their Sorcerer's Apprentice. I mean, Swanky Tiger was probably always planning on using Shadow Word Pain on the Mana Worm at some point. Right, like, but, uh, you, you play the Northshire, they Frostbolt it, that's one of the worst case scenarios, then you yeah. just have the pain. If they don't remove it, then maybe you can get a trade in, get some heal value. Um, but Co Coin Blackwing Technician is still extremely strong. Yeah, it's pretty good. Although, yeah, thanks to the Sorcerer's Apprentice, it can go down straight away with the Forgotten Torch and Arcane Blast, which you kind of 
Maybe you'd like to save it for the cult sorcerer, but I mean, you protect I... your minions, you go face. You play Babbling Book too, so yeah, I I kind of like it. Just just removing it. I mean, yeah. you're not gonna save the torch to go face, really. You're gonna use it to remove a minion, and you get to go the uh you fit the book in. Sorry, and going wide is really extremely strong against priest i think um it's really how these more aggressive tempo based decks beat priest is they just have an early game board that the priest can't really answer right because yes, as it seems it, to work out pretty well right because as it gets into the late game the priest just has uh so many powerful cards like dracnid operative that they usually will inevitably win so mm -hmm. I, I like this plan it's funny that the Forgotten Torch off the Babbling Book got used, but I mean, you don't always expect Tempo Mage to be playing Forgotten Torch in the first week. That's an Entomb. That's, huh, that's an interesting choice for sure, but yeah, I don't know about that. I guess Swinky expected re Tomb like an Antonitis or something. Yeah, I, I mean, know. that would be the thing to do. So, I think now is a good time for Twilight Web. You just saw all that removal get used, and you want to contest the apprentice. She gets so out of control. I think so. This just gives, um, this just gives Sage a, a really good trade with oh. the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Well, I can see why the Whelp would get held, because I mean, it is your only dragon. You'd probably draw one before the Blackwing Corruptor, but I don't know. That's it's, That's fair, actually, yeah. But then the uh, then the the North Shire is just getting thrown away for free. Yeah, so maybe it would have been better to just not play anything rather than play the North Shire. Yeah. Um So Swanky does get rewarded for holding the whelp because he can pick up uh, he picks up the worm rest agent and he can he can play that and then also. I think you could seal your face. I'm not sure if you want to play your one drops here. Uh, no. I mean, the one North Shire was played already, and I think that... I mean, maybe Swanky Tiger was satisfied with soaking the three damage, but... I don't know. He's he's low on dragons, so probably want to pick up some more. And hopefully heal with Cleric, but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen, because Tempo no. Mage is doing its thing, and outside of... I mean, even dragon fire potions too slow. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's a good pickup though. Sage is very low on cards, but still, I think you just have to blackwing corruptor, probably on the three two. Yep. Yeah, probably on the three two. Oh, there is dragon fire. Yeah, on the three two because yeah, as dangerous as apprentices, the extra damage could just kill you. Right, and and with two cards in hand at six mana, pretty unlikely that Apprentice ends up doing something useful. So this yeah. is... This is interesting, because we know that Swinky has Dragon... But if I were in Sage's position, we just well, Frostbolt let's see, the Corruptor. Let's see how much damage can be done. So Frostbolt, Corruptor, the, where the one damage pings doesn't go doesn't really matter so you'll i mean you won't have lethal yeah so he has 10 fire. he has 10 damage guaranteed on face if he wants to do it plus the pings yeah oh and he's actually not gonna play the apprentice to play around dragon fire potion right that's i smart. think yeah sage is in a really good spot i think that's the one way he knows that he loses if he overextends. Right, and I mean... Because he's got this... lethal on board for the next turn anyway. That's true. And we saw this deck run a little heavier, running things like... Um... I'm... Now I'm forgetting the name. Oh, Faceless Summoner. So like, if he just top decks that, or maybe gets a rag, it, that, that can just finish the game by itself. Right, yeah. They do play rag... Uh, they also play Firelands Portal. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of good things for Sage to pick up. They also play I mean, Arcane Intellect and Fireballs. Azure Drakes. Like, there's so yeah. much fuel left in Sage's deck. He just happened to draw all the good early game stuff, which is what you want. It put him in yeah. a good spot. 
You'll never complain around about a priest at six health. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Arcane Blast is one of the worst cards that he could have gotten, though, because I don't think, at least from the rogue game, we didn't see any Arcane Missiles or Mirror Images, so his average card quality, I think, is pretty high, but uh, Arcane Blast is pretty useless here. Do you ever just Holy Nova here? I think you do. The, um, the healing's good, removing the minion's good. I mean, you know, like, so what do you know about the card that's in Sage's hand? It could be a minion that's more than five mana, or it could just be... It, it's either that or it's like a useless spell, like Arcane Blast, pretty much. Right. Yeah. These deck, I mean, they do typically, they have a pretty low curve, but there's also a lot at the top. I don't think that Sage is running too, too much at the bottom. I, I don't think so either. Yeah, so Holy Nova would be great. I mean, Northshire, Northshire Whelp Argus is fine too. That is your last dragon, though. Sage has one card in hand. The Holy Nova seems perfectly... Right, so you could Holy Nova and he to play around a Fireball top deck. Yeah. Um, but it Not might to be better just... to just get something on the board. Yeah. yeah. Healing's good. You've got Entomb if there's a big threat. I mean, even... Relatively speaking, Azure Drake's a big threat. Oh, oh yeah. forgot about these Cabal Chemists. Yeah, Sage yeah, never runs out of fuel with this. Does. That's sure. not what he's looking for. It's fine. But... <laughs> he'll play it, and he'll be disappointed when it hits anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just going to hit one of these one mana cards. I mean, it all depends. If Swanky Tiger doesn't want to play around this, then there's... Azure Drake, but I don't think he, there I don't think there's no any reason to not play a one. Yeah, I think if they you're, ever you're get hit by it. Cabal Chemist, you're very, very happy. Definitely. So he yeah. might just want to play the whelp here um before he loses the dragon in his hand. Or he could go whelp Northshire and taunt them up. Yeah, actually, now that Whelp is getting buffed, and he can squeeze in a heal that way. It's yeah. just, um... Yeah, I... at that point, it's just playing around the Polymorph Potion. Oh, but if he does go for the Drake... Hmm. Yeah, I kind of like the Defender play, though. We'll see. Right, it would only be bad... It would only be really bad against Flamestrike. And... Oh, poor Azure Drake. Priest's worst nightmare turns into a sheep. <laughs> Well. <laughs> okay. I mean, okay. Argus isn't there's there's faceless worse. summoner. Yeah. Yeah. Like the holy nova down. That's good. Oh dear. Okay. Well, no need to ping it anymore. All right. That's why you play faceless summoner first before pinging. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is this is a lot of pressure. Just three having three bodies on the board is there anything is there anything swanky can go corruptor defender here let's see yeah it has to be corruptor defender yeah Do that's doesn't it uh, you could also do two minions and defender and then there'd be but it'd be less reliable uh he could be nether spiting looking for a taunt Okay, well then you just Argus up two things, heal yourself. Yeah. Um, Entomb... Can't, you can't Entomb, because then you're dead on board. Corruptor heal does not... Do you it. also can't... Oh wait, uh, yeah, Corruptor I... heal... Yeah, no, Corruptor heal. Yeah, I definitely like the Corruptor defender play here. Okay, so this... What is this he is trying to get? For... Even Frostbolt no, wouldn't have saved him. Well, there's nothing from the deck that could have saved him, but the Argus play could have. Okay. Yeah. Well. Well. Sage is going to take this one, and that evens the series to 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. So, so now it's, it's going to be Control Warrior, which has to win against Dragon Priest, which is real tough. Yeah, that's going to be a really tough one for Sage to win. Um... 
What are the Imagine, ways that it used oh. to be fine when it was just Nether Spite, but Operative's just ridiculous and like one of your best bets probably is the Golden Monkey ASAP. And then at that point the operative just steals legendaries from your deck. And they get to choose which ones they oh, want man. to. Yeah, I, I was gonna ask you, what are the ways that you think control will match up? I think it's I just guess... I think it's just monkey ASAP. Um Dirty Rat. You it's kind of a it's shoot it's like it's really hard because they have so many minions. It's not like other decks like Reno decks where you can try to identify down the key minions that they might be holding on to. Yeah. So Sage has learned his lesson and throws back the rat. Yeah. And also Ally Armorsmith's just it's a great new card for Control Warrior to be playing, but against Priest it's just terrible. Oh yeah, especially um if Swanky's running Bookworm, which I don't think we saw. Yeah, and even if he's not playing Bookworm, he might discover it off Nether Spite. That's true. All right. Um, has, well, although... ha has Sage had enough of turn two Dirty Rats? Yep. <laughs> yeah, although I would assume that uh, when he discovers off of Nether Spite, is going to look for eight or nine or even ten mana dragons, just getting the most value that he can, because he already knows that this is Control Warrior. Right. Yeah, the armor up makes sense too, obviously, with the the shield slam. There used to be a time where you just tempo war X, but not anymore. No, I mean, ooze is so common in Dragon Priest now. Yeah, I, I see it in almost every list, at least as a one-up. Yeah, so I think I think Swanky Tiger can easily just, yeah, do nothing. Save the brand for the Nether Spite, and then maybe the brand sticks for Draconoid Operative. That's yeah, fine. this this is fine. You're not... Oh. Worried about the control you're developing. Oh, Sage is running Cruel Taskmaster. This is actually one of the ways that Ally Armorsmith can be helpful. Uh, you can Taskmaster it to put it to four attack. It's kind of desperate, oh. but it's a lot better than it just dying. No, that, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. Um, here, he could coin out the Armorsmith if he wanted to. It'll just get pained, but he's just going to... Armor up and pass here, like a control warrior does. I think, Sa yeah, Sage is probably thrilled to see that nothing has happened. No, no whelps, no wormrest agents to make him have to bother responding at all. Oh, definitely. Now he he can just amass his resources here, hope. draw some brawls, draw some hard burn pulls. Ysera. Ysera or Every Alex? Time. Okay. I, I would think Ysera. Just the more I, ways that you can grind them out, you don't need to rush them down. Um, Nazdormu's... I think you just take Nazdormu. Oh, wait, it's banned in TA. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good time. Back when yeah. uh, Nazdormu plus Gadget Sand Jabster would cause people to lose their turn. We had to ban that for a week, and <laughs> Josh Sampson got very upset. Oh, he got upset because it was banned? or Yes. Oh. He, he got furious. <laughs> yeah, I it's think a... I remember there being a, a decent amount of controversy over that. Yeah, that was a fun time. I so remember... Shower Pain yeah. might just get used now. There's not much um, else to do, so... I think it can. I mean, like, Pain... Acolyte of Pain and Ally Armorsmith are definitely much better targets, but it it's not a bad play here. There's also just Draconoid Operative, but how many cards is that for? Eight, nine, yeah, so uh, Draconoid Operative is just fine. Yeah, I think you go for it. I mean, I, I'm actually kind of surprised that he ran so early, although I guess you want an additional dragon rather than an additional card from your opponent's deck. I don't think... Yeah, you don't need to get too crazy with the brand. You could hold it till turn 10 for maximum value, but, mm -hmm. I mean, with those huge dragons, not really necessary. <laughs> like, the Nazdormu can bait out one hard removal. Even Operative might bait out hard removal. Yeah, I think I think Swanky has everything he wants now, really. He doesn't really need to pressure early when when you have these late-game threats. Um, no. However, with, with the pain down... Ally Armorsmith can't get removed immediately. 
So, no. like you said earlier, maybe we'll see a Taskmaster. Ooh. Grom seems I, great. Yeah, I definitely take Grom. Um, the other two aren't really doing much. Yeah, I mean, they're fine. They're just not great. You know you're against a control warrior. You just get the slowest thing possible that's probably going to have to eat an executor shield slam. That's just exactly what you want. Yep, you're never going to be pressured enough where you can't just play out these 8 and 9 mana high no. value cards, so and why not? If if for any reason Swanky Tiger ever does get pressured down, which is extremely unlikely against Control Warrior, there's Dragon Fire Potion. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's really hard for Control Warrior. So he, he takes the Dirty Rat. I'm wondering what he's trying to pull. The dream, the dream would be Elise or the Golden Monkey. Oh, that's true. But, yeah. Yeah, there's actually a lot of, a lot of minions in the hand. Nice. So we do see uh, the Taskmaster here. Um, and then Shield Slam. Shield yeah, Slam so... and the Elise. Okay. I guess he doesn't go for the Elise. Just wants Playing to armor Android. up every turn or something like that. So yeah, the. As innocent as the operative seems, it eats a shield slam, and that's amazing news. Right. Um, huh? Oh, I guess Swanky wants to go rat into Dragonfire Potion. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Maybe that's why the rat got picked. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Um, Armor Smith isn't a great pull because it doesn't die. Uh, I don't even know how good of a pull Sage's Rat is. Like, I feel feel like Sage's Rat isn't really doing anything. Like, if you pull a Sarah, it's like okay. It's, yeah. Then, then then you just lose. <laughs> Sage has got a really rough time with the Dirty Rat after the brand happened. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if he does, pull you could the also Elise, just though. Blackwing Corruptor. Oh, he pulls the Elise. That's it. Oh, man. Yeah, that's... That's the one way to win. And it, what is it's, that, even a a stretch at, it's even five? a stretch at that point. Yeah. Um. That's really disheartening for Sage. This is game five, and you want to keep trying, but it just feels so... Ah... Uh... And and he he doesn't even know um, about Ysera. Yeah. Like, <sighs> well, executed have... got picked up, so I don't know if Ysera mm. gets played first. Uh, the hand's pretty full, but you can handle it a little bit. <sighs> yeah, I I kind Maybe this of is like just Argus I don't playing know. one of the nine mana um, dragons there, but. I, I guess this is also fine. He probably plays Blackwing now. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, so no Blackwing to soften it up. Blackwing Technician. Or just Nether, Nether Spite, Spite and Heal. If you Nether Spite and Heal, then your Dirty Rat's a 2-3. It's not dying. Wait, you how many really... cards does he have in his hand? Uh, three, four, oh, five. wait. Eight. Okay, he's fine. This goes up to nine. Yeah, why not a second, Ysera? Oh, oh man. <laughs> don't have to put it in your deck. Just find it randomly. <laughs> it's fine. Jesus. Okay, well, the Dirty Rat is showing up now with Brawl. But... That's true. Uh, you, you don't want to suicide your alley armor. I mean, you could Dirty Rat pull one of the two... I really hope that Execute brawl. doesn't get used here. Yeah, I don't think you can afford to do it. Oh. Oh no, so that's okay. one execute and one shield. I mean, two Yseras just play one. So you can execute one Yseras, you can shield slam the other, and then Swanky can just then play you whatever got, minions Then you gotta suffer the through Nazdormu the rest of the game. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that's how it goes. In that order. So, yeah, three, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a ten card hand, so Ysera will cause you to mill yourself. Yeah. I mean, Blackwing Corruptor, uh, Azure Drake, Blackwing Corruptor seems totally reasonable. You don't need to play the big the big dudes, but it'd be fun. I think so, but then you run into the same problem with being unable to play Ysera, unless you mill yourself. Yeah. I, I don't... Do you even care about that, though? Like, do you need the other cards in your deck to win this? Uh, probably not. <laughs> the other Drac... Like, you've used both Nether Spite Historians and you used a Draconoid Operative. The The most important card left is Draconoid Operative, I would say. Right. Um, Nothing else is that crucial. It's all about these big dragons and just running them out of... <laughs> okay, okay, so... so, so I, I like this because he doesn't... He doesn't play Drake, so he doesn't draw. Okay. Um, and Nether Spite Historian gets to live. Very important. Yeah, and the 3-5, that's about the same as the 4-4. Four, four. I guess with, with the extra 1-1, one, one, it's actually more stats on the So, that's pretty good. Is it mm. time for Rat Brawl? It might be. <laughs> because... I don't know, everything else just feels so bad. You can trade into things and bash them. I mean, Acolyte just doesn't really have a place. If you if you Dirty Rat Brawl, there's even a 1 in 3 chance that your minion Maybe survives. Yeah, I guess you can just take that. I mean... I don't know. It's, it's, it's desperate, so you gotta rely on things like this to win. Right, you gotta, you gotta play to your outs. You gotta... Just hope you get lucky in these situations. So he's just gonna bash to kill the corruptor. You're leaving four power on the board, which isn't too bad right now. No. Especially because you're at fifty one. I just say let's go go Nazdor move. It'll be pretty hilarious actually, because there's no execute activator, so I think at that point it might be dirty rap brawl. I think so. Um, and hope to pull out another big dragon. Because you figure they're discovering big dragons. I mean, wait, what minions does Swinky have to play? He just has he has the, the three nine mana dragons. or And I think you'd rather play one of the nine mana ones over Azure Drake. So Yeah, over he, he like might Azure just... Drake, Argus. Like, you could save uh, Azure Drake, mm. Power Shield, Argus turn maybe for something after a brawl. Like a brawl and... More likely than not, your minion would live, and then you could just buff it up, taunt it up with Azure Drake. I don't know. That's the whole... yeah, that's possible. I, I think Swanky's just figuring out how how the how he loses. I right. Think. That's yeah, what you I should mean... do in this position. Exactly. I mean, I think Drake Defender is fine because it yeah. pretty much forces the brawl out. Oh yeah, here's Nazdorm. You can drop Ysera. He saves it for the end. <laughs> I guess that's the correct strategy. <laughs> okay, yep, Dirty Rat Brawl. Oh, oh and... my god, only Azure Drake? Loses okay, the 50-50 there. He's going full in here. Okay. But, like, what is the Acolyte doing, really? Oh, the rat lives! Well, the ac yeah, the Acolyte was increasing your chances to win the Brawl, and... Although, I guess you never really wanted to draw much with the Acolyte anyway, because, like, there's no monkey to search for. Right, but... <laughs> yeah, like, I guess it's better to um, have... Uh, I, I guess it's better to have something on the board rather than your opponent to have something, even though the Acolyte's pretty... I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> Laughing uh, Sister, it's pre pretty, pretty solid. Good. Yeah, it's fine. So just bash, execute. Maybe, don't you want to revenge execute instead? Probably, yeah, because revenge is pretty useless and it's not like putting your dirty rat down to five is really I bad. mean... Oh, he could be uh, saving yeah. revenge. It's possible. Has the Shadow Word Death been used? Uh, I think, no, well, no, there's two deaths in hand. Yeah, two, so death, no. two deaths in hand. It, it's hard to see because I'm spectating. Sage. So yeah, me yeah. Too. I guess I guess the way to win is that you're so desperate that you need to activate your Grom and hit them in the face many many times with both Shadow or Deaths being at the bottom. 
Yeah, I I think so. That's probably the line to win. That's the way to win. Because the Golden Monkey got screwed. So Swanky can load up the board again, and this really just isn't something that Sage can deal with. And we're not seeing the second one here. He can't even shield slam the 4-6. No. No. Yeah, you never get through it. Nope. Just save the stockpile of armor for now while it's good, but it'll get chipped down eventually. And the second, the other Ysera just doesn't even get played until the other Brawl gets seen, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, this uh, this build of Control Warrior is just so, like... It's anti heavily... It's very anti-aggro. Right, it's so heavily anti-aggro, it just does so poorly against everything yeah. else. It has I know no threats. That... No Ysera, no Ragnaros. It's not like the Wallet Warrior. It's all in on Elise and Survival. I know that, um, I think Fibonacci has been playing a more list with, like, with, like, uh, cards like Rag and Ysera. And, yep. uh... Maybe Baron get in maybe some ten mana cards even. I'm not sure if he's in his off list or not. Um Yeah, so it's either that, that or Nizoth. Not Cthune anymore, huh? Oh, Cthune Warrior. Yeah, Fibonacci's never been a Cthune Warrior guy. No. I've always I've always looked at his lists and he never had it. He played it like two weeks after Old Gods and then completely no more. Have you yes. tried to make that work in this meta? Oh, Cthulhu Warrior? Um, yeah. Yeah, I have. I came into Druids and Priests and I cry. Ah. Uh, and then, I don't know. Reno decks are just so broken when it comes to a slow game. Right. Control Warrior used to be able to Maybe. beat like all the other control decks, but now there's just too much value. You can get Brand Kazakus. Yeah. It just takes 10 mana potions. And control warrior just can't deal with that. Yeah, if you were a Cthulhu warrior, you'd have to be you'd have to be running the um Well, you'd have to be doing Doom Caller shenanigans, and then you'd have to be shield slamming your own Cthulhu because polymorph right. has potions and stuff, so it just gets messy. Well here's the Grom that's needed to win the game. That's true. Um she can but there's I mean you can revenge here. <sighs> So you revenge. So the revenge was just to kill the Argus, but yeah, because yeah. these minions are just going to get healed up. Well, I guess the the sister can't. Um, no, but the Argus would have. <sighs> so um, does Swanky Tiger not want to play even more here? He I, two doesn't have probably to play is fine. A card. I mean. Yeah, three, nine cards in hand. Yeah, Justicar um, was in the bottom ten for Sage, so yeah. he's still he's dealing. Um, let's see, five five a turn rather than three a turn. Yeah, with what he has on board, so it's probably fine. You could play the Talon Priest if you want to. Mm-hmm. Okay, he plays the third minion. I, I like him. You know. Especially on the lap things this year. Because if this gets brawled, then you just got free reign. Yep. That's the last one. So shield block, shield slam, completely useless. Grom, revenge. If you trade, then Grom's just dead to the board, which I guess... Yeah. Dead to Blackwing Corruptor too. Doesn't even have to use a death, but Tink oh. Master over Spark. I wonder what hmm. Oh what could that be in there for? Um Not Cthulhu Warrior. He banned Shaman Um Rogue. Oh, that that makes sense, kind yeah. of. Uh clears one concealed gadgetsins, concealed questings. Yeah, Edwin's yeah. Okay. I I can kind of see that. I've I've never uh, just because I don't really want to craft a card that's like only fringe playable, but I think it's pretty cool. Right. Yeah. We'll see if with any luck, 
the odds are being slimmed down for Tinkmaster to hit the Laughing Stir, or maybe post Brawl or something if it's a big threat. Okay, the Entomb gets picked up. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe Sage is hoping that Swanky doesn't play anything. He can Tinkmaster, yeah. win the 50 50, take the trade, and have no. Yeah, so Swanky's just going to continue to commit to just the three. Oh, yep. Hero power, very important to get the Frost Giant cheaper. <laughs> All right. Uh. Oh, uh, okay. Well, now he gets the sister, brawl, but <laughs> not what he was looking for. And there. now Tink Master has to win. Okay. Sage has right. gotten some pretty good brawls here. Okay. So, yeah, but both shield slams and executes are used, so Yasera is the way to go now. Uh, yeah, Yasera would well. actually be dead to Grom, which is something. But that's true. Wait. But Grom and Tinkmaster. But you could power shield it. So Swanky actually only has two minions in his hand. I wonder what else he has in his deck. Let's see. He probably... Another operative... Uh, he has another operative. He has another Talon Priest. This is a this is a weird list. It's got Dragonfire Potion and Entomb. Yeah, and and also Dragonfire and Potion Knight. and Holy Knight. Yeah, I think there's, there's no more AOE probably. No, I I think most lists have just cut Dragonfire Potion completely and are running Double Nova. Um, and then I've seen ones with Potion, but with no Nova. You usually don't see both. Swanky has Twilight Guardians left. For sure. Oh, that's true. So those are those are some solid threats. Yeah. Ysera does love that Laughing Sister. Pretty good. Yeah, so you kill this with Grom, and then Grom... I mean, you, you entomb that, knowing that there's... Yeah, there's not going to be any more threats, really. Yeah, so Ysera goes down. All the hard removal got used, so now Grom has to be hard removal. <laughs> um, I think you just entomb it. Yeah, I mean, both players are even on fatigue right now, so yeah. it it's not like Sage can really go for the fatigue plan. He just... No. He's got, let's see, five cards left in his deck now, two in hand, and I'm not counting the coin, compared to... 13 plus the card on the board yeah well maybe he can make him draw with northshire i i, I mean he can't nah. right now but <sighs> yeah oh there's the twilight guardian yeah so these power word shields are never getting played then no um and then just, yeah, Twilight Guardian. I don't even know what the Draconoid Operative could discover anymore that's worth anything. Maybe maybe Sage has a Gore Howl, but I don't know if a Gore Howl can get through everything Um, at this rate. Yeah, let's see. What does Sage have left? A second Fiery War Axe, second Slam. Yeah. Pro most most likely, unless he's, like, cut a Slam or something. Sylvanas is Sylvanas. Good. That's, hey, and no Entomb. Yeah. So maybe Solanus can do some work. Or maybe Yeah. Well, it's something where Swanky Tiger can just trade through the dirty rat with these. Heal no minion, obviously, to not draw. And then just wait. And then the Sylvanas can be dealt with without stealing anything. At least if Swanky Tiger's in control. Because the 3-5 the and 3-6 will be weak enough where they'll die to her. You can crash the Cleric in before. Yeah. But then oh. you're losing your whole board, and Swanky's running out of minions. But there, but Grom's there, so... So he, he has Grom, and he knows he doesn't have any heart. Because just imagine if at any point... That Justicar finally gets played, and then just Grom eats Justicar, and then there's just a 
just a 10-3 on board that can't be killed, except uh, well, with mm -hmm. Warax. Okay. Just deals with it. Oh, don't heal your minion. Is he drawing? Uh... Yeah, there's... Drawing cannot really help. You're gonna get those cards eventually. Getting them sooner is not winning the game faster. Basically the opposite. That Wormrest agent's pretty good. It's like nothing nothing that is left is that threatening, but Sage is just out. <laughs> He just has nothing. So there's exactly just a car, and I think maybe a second slam, maybe a second cruel taskmaster, or maybe something else entirely. Um. Yeah. My my uh, my client crashed again. Uh oh. But I'm, oh, I'm getting operative. back there. Almost clicked on the wrong person. Wait. So with. Oh my god, Swanky Tiger just discovered Gorhal. The one card oh, left in wow. Sage's deck, he got it with Dragon Eye <laughs> That seals it, if it wasn't already sealed. Yeah, well, so Justicar was what, the second or the last second card? to last, and Gorhal was the very last. That's <laughs> that's insane. Those are like two of the most important cards. Well, Gorhal yeah, specifically. It's one it's of just the most bad. important cards in the matchup. It's just too bad that. At least wasn't played and it got pulled out. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Sage has no cards left. Yeah. At this point, he's just deck. trying to kill everything with the Gorhal and hoping that there are no minions left. But that's just impossible. Yeah. He he knows that Grom is in hand. Um. So yeah. That's gonna be it. Now, Swanky Tiger could have saved the death and not used it on the Justicar card to play around Deathwing, but that's pretty unlikely. Oh, that's true. In fact, Swanky Tiger's probably if Swanky Tiger's playing really close attention to what could possibly be left, he probably knows there's a play. Okay, there's the other town priest. Right. Which I wonder if Swanky thinks that this these two cards or something else. He may have forgotten that the coin hasn't been used, but I don't yeah, know what it could be. Yeah. Like, again, besides Deathwing. It's possible that he didn't keep track of the coin. There's no real need for Town Priest. You're winning this race easily. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's no reason to play it. No reason to speed up the clock that you're already... Uh, I guess Sage is gonna speed that clock up for himself, though. Yeah, he's on he's on the two turn kill plan for operative. I mean, he can't heal his operative, so that's something. That's true. Unless he, uh, oh my god, he's he's gonna do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Painting your own Norshire. Yep, to heal it up, back up to six damage, but. And six, now the operative is up. never dying. Yeah, I don't know. I think if your if your opponent has priest, th this was the one thing that the warrior had to dodge. Maybe the warrior needed to be led with much sooner in the series. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's good so. reasoning, but it's just or, a it's just a miserable experience to <laughs> to play a game like that. It it really is just it's just it, like the Elise got pulled to your one distant hope of winning. It's funny because it's usually Control Warrior that has those games that where it just grinds the opponent out and it's miserable for the uh, uh, opponent to play against. But in this case, it's it's the opposite. The Control Warrior just got grinded out. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a... It was an interesting night. We started off with the 3-0 sweep and then there were long 3-2 series that followed. Yeah. And yeah, so Swanky... Swanky Tiger got the win. That's huge for Nether Storm. They're up eight two three. Uh, Unless yep. some more matches got played. That should be correct. Yeah, so it's going pretty well for them. 
and good for Temporal Legends, and also Parallax. So yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think uh, oh, these were funny. some great games that we saw tonight. I don't, I don't think Sage is nearly as exhausted from that game as we were. You just messaged me saying that was fun. I'm happy to see that. Really? So I would not have that reaction <laughs> if I had just played that game. <laughs> I I'd be frustrated, and uh, I'd probably I'd probably start complaining like Brunson about Priest. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Thanks for thanks for coming for Salty Saturday. And yeah, that's gonna be it. We hit we hit a lot of viewers. I went and peeked at the viewer count. We were at like in the mid forties at some point. That was pretty crazy. Oh, nice. That's that's good to hear. So cool. Not that that really. Is the most important thing but it's just cool to see getting close to that twitch partnership oh yeah i think it's 100 or so regularly i don't know <laughs> yeah but anyway thanks thanks mark shire and thanks the anarchist for helping the stream go on yeah no problem uh tonight. thanks for organizing this putting and also it all, all together and also the anarchist um we we might have sounded like idiots than geniuses he whispered things should have been obvious. Well, not obvious. Yeah. <laughs> not, not totally clear. It's it's so, pretty easy to to miss things when you're casting. You focused in on like one specific line and you miss some obvious things. Yeah, definitely. Yep, but that's it. That's it for Salty Saturday this week. And week three continues into Sunday. So until next week, that is all. <laughs>